Hunter. You must kill someone if you want to leave. My mind froze, and my breath caught in my throat as I thought about it. Uh, though I could feel a paralyzing fear slowly making its way through my body, dominating every last nerve. The air hung heavy around me, pressing down like a weight around my neck. It took everything I had just to endure that weight. So what are you gonna do now? Just standing around glaring at each other. A pointed comment was directed at everyone in the room. It helped pull us back to reality. Yeah. Right, she's right. Listen to me! Sometimes, even if you're nervous or afraid, you just gotta step forward. Mm -hmm. To forget the simple fact, I can't forgive myself, I'm so ashamed. Please, someone hit me! I can't forgive myself, please, someone hit me! Punish me. Okay, interesting kink. But what is the mission exactly? Stupid. Idiot, to look for a way out, duh. <sighs> We totally need to find whoever's controlling the super bear and beat the hell out of him. But before we could do all that, we have to take a look at the handbook. It's probably best to check out the school regulations Monokuma mentioned before doing anything it's else. Fine, fine. So let's hurry fine. up and check out that stupid rules. Alright, cool. Students may only reside within the school. Leaving campus is unaccepted use of time. Okay. Nighttime is from 10 to 7. Some areas are off limits at night, so please exercise caution. Sleeping anywhere other than the dormitory will be seen as sleeping in class and punished accordingly. With minimal restrictions, you are free to explore Hope Peak Academy at your discretion. Violence against the headmaster Monokuma is strictly prohibited, as is destruction of surveillance cameras. Anyone who kills a fellow student becomes blackened will graduate unless if they discuss. Additional school regulations may be added as necessary. Okay. Feeling a slight dizziness, I raised my face up from my screen. I looked around and saw the same stony expression from everyone else. This is bullshit. What hell kind of rules are these? I'm not going to let them control me. <laughs> then why don't you wander around the school without care in the world and see what happens? Personally, I would love to see what happens to someone if he breaks the rules. Yeah. However. But if he got punished, like we saw before, I don't think there'd be a respawn. It's like video games. It's like video games, guys. I have a question. For regulation number six, what do you think that means exactly? I've already forgotten what that was. Oh yeah, that's a good point. Unless you're talking about the second half, right, where they, unless they are discovered. I was wondering about that myself. <laughs> if you want to graduate, you have to kill someone without anyone finding out it was you. But why do we have to do that? Because we're in a fucked up school. I don't see any reason to worry about it. Frankly, I don't want to hear anything from someone who waits for someone else to decide what to do for them. Don't jab at me. Full on, full on stab. Well now, let's all forget about the silly junk murderers or whatever. Okay. Now that we know the rules, let's start exploring the school. We need to find out where exactly we are. Is there any way out? What about food and supplies? You understand? There are tons of questions we need to answer. Hm. I'll be going alone. Pretty stupid idea, don't you think? Hm. Someone here might already have started thinking about murdering one of us. You're saying that we should stand around with them in our midst or make sure that's easier for- We could just all hang out. Wait, hold on a second. That would never- don't bother saying it couldn't happen. You can't deny the possibility. That's why you all seized up in fear when you realized graduation rule was made clear to you. <laughs> Am I wrong? Um. Hm. So I'm simply acting in accordance with what I think is best Just for me. hold on. Hold on. Like hell, I'm gonna let you run off and do whatever you want. What? Out of my way, Plankton. Okay. You're killable. What, what the fuck is that supposed to mean? Such ignorance. One tiny bit of Plankton drifting across the sea. So minuscule, so insignificant that they could possibly have any influence on the boundless ocean. You're fucking dead. I'm gonna kick your ass. Stop it! We shouldn't what? fight. What the fuck you say? You kind of some kind of goody goody little bitch. You wanna throw down? Who do you think you are talking to me like that? You think you're my fucking dad or something? No, I wasn't. You son of a bitch. Fuck you! <laughs> he punched me. I flew back in a heap. I'm dead. Very short game. And when I finally opened my eyes again, I saw where I was. Oh, hey. Ugh, huh? Where am I? As if it was part of my daily routine, I woke up in another room I had never seen before. Okay, so where am I now? You now have access to the handbook menu. You can use this to check a variety of information as you play. Open the handbook menu by pressing F1. Those are some weird stats. Why are you giving me their chest size? Can now look at their ages. Doesn't say their age. It says their height. They're all manlets. Their chest size is more important than their age. Hmm. 
It's that kind of game. Three most important stats about a human being. <laughs> Barrel chested as fuck. Must be the key to the room. My name's written on the keychain, which means it must be mine, right? Better hang on to it for now. Announcement from Headmaster Monokuma. Each room's lock has been designed to completely protect against tampering or lock picking. Remaking an individual key is quite troublesome, so please make sure not to lose yours. Your room comes furnished with a shower, but please note that water is turned off at nighttime. Also, the bathroom in the girls' room includes a lock of their own. Finally, we've all prepared a small gift for each of you. For the girls, a sewing kit, and for the boys, a toolkit. The sewing kit includes a map and the body vitals organs. One well, stab will do a good job, girls. For the boys, we believe a strong blow to the head with any of these tools should be ample. Don't think, just feel. Let's all just enjoy ourselves. Let me show you a thing real quick. So, like, crochet, right? It's like, um, knitting is where you take two needles and you kind of, like, juggle the thread or the, the yarn between the two. Crochet, however, is where you, like, pull it through loops. So you use a crochet hook like this, right? You can get these massive ones that you can just use as a fucking club. Like so. So if they had one of those, like, you're not allowed to take knitting needles on planes most of the time, but you could get, like, a fucking club on a plane. So if they have one of these guys, you might be able to do some damage. She's so happy. It's murder time. Crumple up a sheet of paper and throw it in the trash. This appear to be the bathroom. It's not opening. I guess it's locked. Truth bullets. Truth bullets. Truth bullets. Leave the area. This is like something out of an old TV show. Wham! <laughs> Sayaka? Sorry. Are you okay? Oh my god, can you sound any more like a virgin? I, I'm fine. I hope you're okay. Are you okay, Sakia? Are you hurt? <laughs> you can make it sound worse than it is. I'm completely fine. I know how I look, but I'm actually built a pretty good muscle from jumping up and down on stage. That's good. Um... But are you okay? You know, from when Mondo hit you? That's true, I did get knocked out right in front of everybody. I like the art on the door. That's good. Makoto. Oh, I'm fine. Nothing wrong That's here. Good. That's good. I was kind of worried. Oh, yeah. By the way, what are you doing here? Um, I came to get you. You came to get um, me. Listen. Well, if you're feeling better, I was hoping you could come with me to the dining hall where I could murder you low-key. Does that mean it's almost time to get back together? If that's what's going on, then of course I'll go with That's you. good. I'll meet you in the dining hall. Well, that's not really keeping up with me. How do they draw fat fuck? <laughs> Sorry, I tried to walk into it. Third floor? That sounds right. I do like everything kind of just dropping into place. What? Hey, um... By the way, Makito. What is it? Um... Well, it's just... I know this is kind of continuing the self-introduction thing, but I wanted to ask you something. Did you happen to go to Blackroot Junior High? Were you maybe in class two? Yeah, actually, I was. I knew it. I went there, too. I was in class four, though. Do you remember me? Do I remember? Back in middle school, she was a celebrity with all kinds of ultimate surrounding her. How could I forget? Almost as surprising as her question was that she remembered me. We never even talked to each other, but somehow she still knew who I was. Hey, um... Are you okay? Yeah, I'm just surprised that I wouldn't have thought that you remember me. We went to the same school for three years. Of course I remember. She went to look. Well, that's true. There's lots of students in our grade, right? Plus, I've never been the type of person to really stand out. I average on everything, and all my hobbies are really normal. Even normal would call me boring. Aww. What are you talking about? You're so strange. Strange? That's... <laughs> she giggled even louder. Somehow, mysterious smiles of her made my heart grow calmer. She's gonna murder me. She's absolute murder. Like, she's gonna murder. Her smile is the nicest smile I've ever That's seen. Good. That. Anyways, I'm really glad that I know someone here. <sighs> Talking to you has made me feel a lot better about this. You're amazing, Makoto. No, no, I'm really not. You're the one that helped me find my courage again. I'm not one of those ultimate students. Thank you for saying that. Okay. Thank you for helping me out. I'm going to be your ultimate assistant. My assistant? <laughs> yep, I'm your assistant now. I'm going to help you out as much as I can. So let's get out of here together. If she says things like that, I just... Gets me nuts. Hey, um... Getting me nuts. I can't believe no one's here yet. I'm pretty sure they'll start showing up soon. Almost like he timed it. 
Taka threw open the dining hall right as Sakia said that. So you two got here first. Too bad. I was sure I was going to beat everyone. I guess that means that I don't have enough fighting spirit yet. Well, I won't give up. Next time, I swear I'll win no matter what it takes. Justice shall prevail. <laughs> That's a bit much, don't you think? And soon after that, everyone else came strolling into the room one after another. So that way we don't have to have individual conversations with each of them. After a few minutes, everyone gathered in the dining hall. Okay, it looks like everyone's here. Time to start the meeting! Can we all sit at the same table? Or do the kids want to have their own fucking punch table over there? What the fuck are you doing all the way over there? Let's all go around and share what we found out during our respective investigations. I was unconscious and I found that I don't like being punched. The sooner we find out what's going on, the sooner we get out of here. Hold on a sec. What are you talking about? What about what's her name? You know, the silver haired girl. I know, Kyoko. Hmm. What about her? Aww. She's not here. <laughs> Took another rook around the... Sorry, my, my throat is fucked. I wonder where she went. Has anyone seen her? Also, I have dyslexia. I'm gonna use those excuses like interchangeably. But everyone shook their heads. Mm -hmm. So nobody's seen her? Why is Kyoko not shown up? Could it be because she got murdered? Is it possible? Was she really? No, no, I'm just overthinking things. Mm -hmm. Darn it, Kyoko. Are you really gonna be late like this on the first day of school? Not only is she late, but she didn't tell anyone that she would be late. A most unbecoming personality trait. You're a real jackass right now, you know that? Mm -hmm. What do you want me to do? Punctuality is everything. You hear me? Now then, I declare the first session of Hope Peaks Academy briefing sessions has begun. First of all, I've talked enough, so maybe you should listen to what everyone else has to say. Okay, let's do that. Oh, you know, what's up? I feel like I've become your personal assistant, don't you agree? I don't fucking trust you. I'll, I'll trust you farther than I could throw that fat ass. I could probably throw you like 10 feet. I could shot put this bitch. I believe in myself. 180 pounds. I, I could shot put her. 108, not 180. It's pretty skinny. That's what I'm saying. But fat fuck. How, how fat is he? Sorry, I know you're trying to have a conversation with me, but I need to look up everyone's stats. 342 pounds at 5 foot 7. Oof. May not be the best assistant in the world, but I'll give it everything I've got. I've already done so much to be my assistant. I don't trust you. I don't trust you. Okay, so since you're in the dark about all this, let me lay out what's been going on since. Everyone's been split up to investigate different parts of the building, but... Who's that? Oh, him. I wanted to try to find some clues on who's responsible for imprisoning us here. But unfortunately, I made no discoveries. That's all for me. That's it? If I uncovered anything, naturally I had more to say, but I didn't, so I don't. Right, understood. Or you could be a lying bitch. I spent some time looking around the dormitory, and I found... I There was a major discovery of the century. I found that there was exactly one room per... Is the guy all right? All the rooms are soundproof. Wait, who's Chiro? Oh, okay. Oh, I, I could have waited five seconds to find that out. Next door neighbor could scream their lungs out and wouldn't hear a thing. <laughs> well, each other would have a private room where they could also lock. But it looks like there are only locks in the bathrooms in the girls' dorm rooms. When I checked the bathroom door before, it definitely seemed like it was locked. Are they saying I'm a chick? Like, what? So they got a bunch of rooms ready for us. They're assuming we're going to be here for a while. Quiet down and listen! Better have that than not. At least we don't have to worry about surviving like wild animals. Theory. Chick who's dead is in my bathroom, but it's not my bathroom. It's actually the chick who lives next door to me, who's the bitch that I've been saying is suspicious. Calling it now. That's why she was outside my door. Don't tell me if I'm right, but that's my call. That's all for my report. Let's move on to whoever's next. Looks like... Okay. Well, I went back and down the... Right... I want to see if any of those metal plates could come off. What happened was... Yeah. Purple hair bitch is dead in my bathroom, but it's not actually my bathroom. They switched the nameplates on the doors, which is why I have a lock on my bathroom. And they switched out the thing. That's what my theory. There wasn't any hope of escape anywhere. School has really been cut this off. Is bad. This sucks. Bad, 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 it really bad, sucks. Bad. Hey, come on. Calm down, you're making me nervous. Same goes for Hina, Sakura, and Mondo. Where were you? 
I thought we all could find some way to communicate with the outside, so we were looking all over, but we couldn't find anything. Yeah. Sorry. Went back to the main hall, thinking maybe we could do something about that giant hunk Why? of metal. Do I need to, like... All right, hold on. Here's my theory. I woke up. Makoto woke up in what is actually Sayaka's room. But she switched the nameplates on my room and her room, which is why she was outside the door. And... Kyoko is dead in the bathroom, and that's why there's a lock on my door, because it's not a dude's room, it's a girl's room. That's what I mean. But even if Sakura and me both wouldn't budge, we hit the desk. It's like hard as metal. Yes, indeed. It is metal. Anyway, we're gonna get out of here, we're gonna have to... Right. I feel like I could just cry, but no. I have to hold it in. I have to manage my hydration. They're not starving us. I should tell you what happened next. It has nothing to do with communicating about the outside world, but it's still worth worrying about. In both the school and the dorm areas, there was a set of stairs leading up to another floor. But the gates there, we couldn't find any way to open them, so we checked it out. In other words, at this point, we're only able to search the first floor. We can further assume that there is potentially something above the second floor as well. And if that's the case, at least there might be a chance it leads out. So, that's what they have to say, huh? I guess I'm the only one left. Yeah, where the fuck were you alone by yourself? murdering. I found a fridge in the back of the kitchen and it was overflowing with all kinds of stuff. I guess I don't have to worry about food at least. I'm sure for now, but even with all that, are there there are 15 of us. How long can the food last? I don't think we have to worry about it. All the food gets restocked automatically each day. It's fucking weird that you know that, but alright. You saw him? Okay. Yeah, he came out of nowhere while I was checking the fridge. He told me that. Then he disappeared again. He was so fast, I can't believe that he could have moved around with a remote control. That's... Weaponized toy that can just appear from anywhere. I can't tell if we're supposed to be afraid or not. But, but everything was okay. He can't try and, like, eat you or anything. <laughs> eat her? What do you mean by that? You mean me for coming here to talk to you Come on, man! Hey, yeah, yeah, what the hell? Fatty, acting like some kind of sleazy drunk dude. Actually, not like there's a good kind of drunk dude. Hey, stop screwing all of you! Stop screwing! Yes, someone's in Devor. I don't think he means four. I think he means going down on someone. She's right. We can't be making stupid jokes right now. We got to do something. Or a voice cut through the noise, interrupting Mondo. We're all spending an awful lot of time yelling and carrying on. Mm -hmm. Oh fuck! You're alive. Wow. I'm actually kind of surprised. You're. Considerably less murdered than I expected. My theory is falling apart. A major part of my theory is that you're dead. <laughs> do you really think you can afford to do so? Have none of you accepted the reality of the situation? No. What the heck? Where the heck have you been? You already started the meeting without you. She didn't say a word. Instead, she just dropped a piece of paper on the table. What's this? It appears to be a map of Hope Keek's Academy. A map? Where did you find this? What if she switched her own name tag with my room, then she murdered herself, and now she's a hologram or a ghost? She's not saying things because she's dead. <laughs> the map is a murderer. It doesn't matter where she found it. It does matter. You're really freaking us out right now. Never mind that. What's it mean? Just look at it. The building we're in right now is laid out precisely the same way as Hope Peak Academy. I mean, that's... So what you're saying, this is really Hope Peak's Academy. It's true. Well, in terms of construction, yes. But it looks like it's had a number of strange renovations done to it. Renovations? However, I don't know the, all the details yet, but I found out about the details about the first um, floor. I mean, it would be kind of hard to, like, reconstruct an entire fucking building. It's so stupid it's not even possible. This is where the country's future elite are supposed to come and learn? What? But if this is really Hope's Peak, then where are all the other students? <sighs> come on, guys. Let's just stop talking about this, you know, negative stuff. You guys aren't worried? Things don't look good. Yo. Worried? What is there to worry about? I mean, we're all planned out, right? The people in charge of Hope Peak put us all together, right? <laughs> Man, if I got stressed every time if something like this happened, I'd have ectoplasm shooting out of my mouth. You know? Good things come to those who wait. So you just gotta chill and everything will work itself out. <laughs> What's your problem? Why are you laughing? What's so funny? <laughs> just happy, that's all. It seems splitting up to investigate was a good idea after all. Have you been listening? Looking around was a total waste of time. We didn't find a way out. We didn't find out who's behind us. We still have no idea what's going on. Oh. Oh, is it not crystal clear to you what's going on? Are you okay with this? 
It's perfectly obvious that we've been imprisoned in some secret location with no way out. You didn't have to go and say that. I was trying not to think about it. No way out. We're trapped. What are we supposed to do? <laughs> it's very simple. If you want to leave, you just have to kill. Stop it. Don't even joke about it. Everyone just calm down, please. We have to stop and think about what to do from here. Seems like... There's got to be something we can do. <laughs> All we can do is adapt. Uh, that's... Live here? Wait a minute. What if I just galaxy brained another portion of the story? Because if I had my door plate switch with a girl, then, then. Okay, hold on. My brain is almost forming a thought. Whoever put me in their room could unlock the door and murder me in my sleep. Like a murderer. The lack of adaptability is the lack of survivability. Survival is not based on who's the strongest or the smartest. It comes up with who can adapt. As someone who's come out on top more than once, I have a suggestion. What? What do you mean? Hmm. We all understand that we're trapped in here, which means we are all spending the night. However, you do remember the rule regarding nighttime, right? So regarding nighttime, I think we need to add a rule of our own. What do you mean? <laughs> Going out at nighttime should be prohibitive altogether. The school regulations do not actually tell us not to go out at night, but I would like to make it official. <laughs> but why? We we'll all be afraid someone might try and come and kill us. What? <laughs> if we have to worry about that night after night, who knows how long it will wear us down in no time. I see. So you're suggesting we limit our activity at night as a kind of preventative measure. Indeed. However, unlike other rules, nobody can be forced to comply, so we'll all just have to agree to follow what it. What can we do? I mean, I see what you mean by that, but I think I can agree to that. It's like the little goth li Lita said. Without something like that, we're just going to self-destruct. Listen to me! On behalf of all of the men here, I agree to comply. What? You can't just decide to speak for us. Then if you will excuse me, where are you going? Let's see. It's almost nighttime and I want to take a shower before it arrives. I hope you are well. So goodbye. Moving with pure elegance. All right. All right. So random little like drop. She's not the worst character. I must said that I was like her. I think it was just the gambling thing, but there's a certain level of class there. I like to think I'm a classy little fucker. So, you know, I guess we'll be spending the night. Hmm. So, Mr. Chairman. What next? One person already left. Like she said, it's almost nighttime anyway. We can make we can reconvene first thing tomorrow morning. Huh? Do we really have to stay the night here? What yes. Can we do? We don't have a choice. We can't go out for long without getting some sleep. Oh, this sucks. So we all have to give up. So in the only end. option is to split up and look around again. Let everyone know if we find anything. Hmm. Okay, let's do it. Then yeah. we're done for today? Good, I'm exhausted. I don't trust you. I don't trust you. Nope, nope, nope. Do not trust you at all. It's locked. Bzz. Not locked. What? Talk about an overreaction. It's like you just saw a ghost or something. What are you doing here? Point of the fact I acknowledge this room has a problem with the door frame. So the reason is it won't open is because it's not locked. It just doesn't fit. Hey, um... Did you just notice? What can you not read? The bathrooms and the boy rooms do not have locks. I mean, the lock in the boys' room is kind of pointless, don't you think? I mean, like, it seems weird to have a lock on the door and then a lock on the bathroom, right? Anyway, there's a little trick to opening this little particular door. That's what I'm here to teach you. You gotta turn the doorknob and lift up while you pull. Yes, indeed. Go ahead and give it a try. <laughs> okay. Bye -bye. Yeah, I don't feel lucky right now. I'm in a murder school with people who are good at things, and I'm not. Including, might I mention... Master of martial artist, leader of gangs, and um, some bitch who probably wants to play Russian roulette because she's good at gambling. So, you know, there was a cross promo ad for this game involving the movie Ted in Japan. Are you fucking with me? Magic that's a thing. Okay. So this is how the curtains closed on my first day at Hope's Peak Academy. Soon enough, I was asleep. It would be too much to hope that I'd wake up and realize it was all a dream. Kind of lame as far as innings go, but I'd be fine with that. Good morning, everyone. It is now 7 a.m.
a.m. and nighttime is officially over. Is time it like a? Does this game have replayability in the way that Zero Time Dilemma does, where depending on how you do it, there's multiple endings? Get ready to greet another beast. Jesus Christ, dude, day. with the subs. Thank you. Apparently in the morning. Totally lack of windows. There's no way to be sure. What should I do now? Maybe I should go and find Sakya and we can figure out where to go. For I don't trust her. I don't trust her. With the newfound determination, I left my room. If I know where she is, she can't murder me. What? There might be something around here I could use for self-defense. Well, whoever's keeping it. See, she's knowing how to play the game. You play the long con. You go, hey, we went to school together. You, I don't fucking trust you. Oh, trust you. Why'd you include spoilers in porn of all places? Why would you have porn? Let me guess. If there's porn of anyone in this game, it's of her, isn't it? I mean, whoever's keeping... And the fat guy. Anyway, um, whoever's keeping us here to show us up and attack us, you never know. Whoever trapped us here, whoever presented us with the rules for murdering each other, whoever puts us in this insane position, she's right. We'll never know. Might be able to protect myself, but I'm not going to confirm or deny that. There's porn of nearly everyone in this game. Well, now that I think of it, the display case and the... Yeah, that's true. All right, let's go. Again? Like I said, I'm psychic. Don't talk about the piss fic. What do you mean, piss fic? I want to press space so I can Minecraft jump. So this is two of you right now. Are you on a date? What? Come on. Never to guess if you're a total player, huh? No, it's nothing like that. I'm his assistant. His assistant? What is that? Some kind of new role play Sorry. thing? Well, whatever. Whatever you're into is your business. I don't judge. Anyway, if you don't mind, just head to the gym already. Yeah, let's go. I wanted to buy things. Maxing out their friendship gives you more points for the trial. Yeah, let's. I'm taking that. Taking the sword. Pretty impressive. Pretty, completely covered in gold coating, but I barely touched it, and that gold stuff's all over my hands. Even for self-defense, I think it's a little... Well, it's better than nothing, I guess. Hey, um... You should take it with you. It might liven up your room a little. You think so? I guess you'd be careful. You should better wrap it in newspaper or something. Sir. <sighs> You'll protect me? Well, thank you for saying that. If I've got you on my side, I guess I don't need a weapon after all. Yeah, you already have a tool. Me. Okay, we can stop looking for a weapon then. But as long as we're here, let's hang out. Do you have anything to say? I know I said I wanted to talk to you, but now that we're here, I don't really know what to talk Sorry. about. I guess I was the one who invited you to come with me, too. Sorry. It's okay. If there's nothing to talk about. We can just not talk, right? Huh? You don't have to force yourself to talk. We can just, I don't know, stare off into space or whatever. Stare off into space? We're probably super bored just standing around doing nothing. No, it's not boring. It's just one of the best signs that you're comfortable with someone is whether or not you can just, like, be near someone and it not be awkward to not talk. That being said, she's gonna fucking murder someone or be murdered. Kind of no out of nowhere, but do you have a dream? What do you mean? What is your dream? I'd love to hear. Diverting the conversation suddenly. I've always wanted to be a star as long as I can remember. I grew up without a mur mother, mu murder, sorry, slip of the tongue. My dad worked real late every night and he was always home. As a kid, I was really lonely. But all that changed when I saw a pop star on TV for the first time. She was so pretty like a princess and she could sing and dance. But more than anything else, there was her smile. Looking at her smile, I could feel my loneliness melting away. I decided that's what I wanted to be someday. I wanted to give that kind of encouragement to others. <laughs> I mean, everyone's got their dreams. One of the most dangerous things you can have is, is telling people someone. I mean, like, if you know someone's dream, that's, I mean, that's another thing you can do. If you're an asshole, you can use it against them. If you're a good person, you can try and help make it happen. Honestly, it's really incredible. Bye. I did whatever I took to reach that dream. I mean, even some things that weren't so pleasant. Huh? You see. I honestly believe that as long as you kept chasing your dreams, some days they had to come true. But to do that, you can't take your eyes off your dream, not even for a second. Even if sometimes it's a bad dream, whether you're awake or whether you're asleep. To make your dream a reality, you have to keep your gaze fixed on that no matter what. In that world, if you lose focus for even a split second, you get left behind. You have to keep swimming against the current without even taking time to breathe. I mean, just saying she might have murdered someone. And like the, the biker dude said, like, he's got he's got things he's got to do on the outside. He's got to get out. In the same way, she's got a dream to keep. She's got things she's got to do. She's got to get out. That means murder. Is it really that tough? Is it not fun at all? Oh, no. Oh no, don't get the wrong idea. It's super fun, but it's not 
that's not what scares me. I enjoy every single day I wake up and get to do what I do. Everyone in our group is amazing. We're rivals in a way, but they all mean so much to me. We've been performing together since we were so long, young. They're like, they're all like family to me. Without them, I feel like I would have given up on my dream long ago. To work together and fulfill our dreams together has brought me so much happiness. But that's why. But that's the thing that scares me the most. If the world gets tired of us, then what happens? What happens to us? The dream dies, those wonderful days come to an end, and everyone goes in their separate ways. She's trembling. She must be terrified. She worked so hard and sacrificed so much to get where she is. She must be terrified of you losing see. it. So that's the reason I decided to come to Hope's Peak. What do you mean? Um, well, they say if you graduate from here, your success is basically guaranteed. Which means I could keep on performing with my best friends forever and ever. At least that's what I thought. Really did believe that. But now we're trapped in here with no way out. They're probably waiting for me. <sighs> While I'm in here, the world out there is forgetting about me. Minute by minute, we're all disappearing. But still. Ah. <sighs> If you ever become a streamer, you'll know this feeling. I can't take breaks, because if I take breaks, everyone will forget about me, and then I'll lose everything I've ever worked for. It's a mood. Ask a streamer about it, about that specific mood. It's why I take days off, because otherwise I'll go insane. Why? Why? I can't afford to be stuck in here. That's the first time I heard her cry out from deep within herself. Art mood, too, yeah. I think that's just any sort of thing. I understand why she felt that way. The way she's caring, I can't even imagine Sorry. it. The truth, though, is that people will come back. And if you need a break, you just let people know before you take the break, and then they know where you went. They'll know how long you'll be, and then you'll come back. Sorry, I didn't mean to complain. Uh, um, kind of killed the mood, huh? Not at all. Sorry. The mood? Were we... Were we, 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 we gonna fuck? I'm um, Sakya? Are you hungry? So before we head back, why don't we get something in the dining hall? So... Okay. You wanna make us something to eat? I might not look like it, but I'm actually a pretty good cook. Wow, really? What's your specialty? Chili oil. You mean the condiment? <laughs> Just kidding. She burst out laughing. So, another thing with being an entertainer is you have to pretend to be fine when you're not. I don't like that mood change. I don't trust her. Really? You either? I don't trust her either. Everything's fine. Am I okay? What do you mean? I'm fine. How did it happen so fast? It's almost like a mask. Some kind of neutral expression. We're headed to the dining hall to get something to eat before returning to our rooms. Hey, I've got a sword now. Neat. You can spend your time with your fellow classmates and deepen your friendship. You can also give them presents, which potentially gives you even better, better impression of you. You can get the... Right. Certain points, you'll be witness to intimate events. Ooh. Uh, new info will be added to each person's report card. These events can also be used to new skills, which can be useful as everything plays out uh don't read the comments spoiler heavy i mean i got through i got through quite a few games without spoilers um i got through doki doki literature club and stuff i'll just not look into anything that's why i was asking like how old is so and so because i can't look at the wikipedia page because if i look at the wikipedia page it's like well she's uh she's 17 years old and she's the penultimate murderer she's actually the person uh controlling the robots and uh, you know she's got lasers for arms and actually she's an alien the wiki doesn't have ages well what the fuck he's saying you don't have la no i am saying i don't have lasers for arms who will you befriend well i want to befriend the person that ima says that i'm like because i want to know whether or not she's right or not and whether or not i have to kick her ass i don't like how you're probably right that they're not saying the ages so that way you don't know so that way you don't know how old they are because if you don't know how old they are, they can be any age, including the legal age, which means you can have really fucked up shit go on, and it's fine. Befriend the one you couldn't take in a fight. That's probably a good point. I mean, if she goes down, if, like, Beef McCardstrong goes down, like, we're fucked. It's fair to guess their ages since we know they're in Japan's 10th grade. Japan, 10th grade. And I'm on a FBI watch list now. 10th grade is uh 15 to 16 anyway i'm gonna go uh hopefully um uh hopefully you enjoyed this i enjoyed this um i hope you guys enjoyed me fucking around and not really playing the game and just yelling at it instead i'm gonna play at least this one and maybe the second one depending on how it goes hello how are you guys doing all right so who do i want to get what'd you do what did you do? Remember me? I am the one and only pet food the Abita. 
great story. All right, let's see what's going on. So that's the bath. And then somehow from the bath, you can get to the hot spring. Is there going to be scenes? I'm just, he's standing right now next to like the shut down bathhouse. And I have, a, I have to assume it's his fault. I don't think fingers in his ass guy is in this one. Kanye West, he likes big things in his ass. Kanye West, he likes big things in his ass. Yeah, this is not fingers in your ass guy. What do you what want? What should I do? I'm kind of scared. Are we really trapped in here? I'm gonna, I'm gonna lay it down for you. You didn't stay in here last night for fucking kicks, right? It seems as if you are stuck in here. Yes. Looking at chat and realized that I was just hardcore staring at the women's bathroom. Like, what are the chances I can sneak into the women's restroom and find coins? Obviously, I can't go in. That's, that's coward talk. First customer of the day just wants a discount for no particular reason. I tell him no. Luckily, he's like, okay. Like, luckily he didn't push the issue, but I was like, that was a weird way to, I mean, literally I clocked in, the guy comes in and he's like, hey, you know, I just want to buy this. Hey, can I have a, you know, discount? I'm like, why? I didn't say why, I said, do you have a coupon? In the intonation of why though. The second woman comes up, she's like, hey, and I, I changed the story up a little bit because I wasn't sure if she was going to come back or not that same day, but she was actually with her kid. My coworker, as I come in, says, hey, that kid over there, that's with this woman. She left for a minute. She's supposed to get a disc. She's supposed to get the, the buy two, get one free coupon. She lost it. Our boss says fucking whatever, as long as we make the customer happy. I'm like, okay, cool. She comes up to the counter. She brings up two games and, and, and one of them. It's Smash Brothers. The other one is Spider-Man. Smash Brothers is like 60 bucks. The other one is like 30 bucks. She wants to use the buy two, get one free deal. She has a receipt. I'm like, okay, I'll return the games you bought previously and make one of these games, one of them free. So that way you can have a little bit of, yeah. So I do that and it makes Sonic Forces, which is like 15 bucks free. She's like, but I want one of them free. And I'm like, you got Spider-Man free. So it is. She's like, I, I I want Smash Brothers free. I want to do it in a separate transaction. I want it to be free. I'm like, it's, it's going to be the cheapest game, ma'am. So I go, let me go talk to my coworker who's gone on break. And this conversation went for like 20 minutes, I, I found out. We got to that point where she was like mad about it. She's like, yeah, my kid's been in the hospital for like 14 months. Uh, you know, zombie bite. And I'm like, oh, all right, fucking whatever. I'm not going to question that. I go into the back and I'm like, hey. And he's like, there's something wrong with her. And I'm like, okay. So then I go back out there. The conversation went on a little bit longer than that. But that's basically how it went. I I, I tell her, yeah, you know. She says that, uh, or, or, or my coworker says, you know, no, we, we can't do that. She's like, okay, well, I guess, I guess you're not getting the, I, I guess you got to pick one of these two games because they changed the deal on us. They changed the deal on us. They, they said they were going to do one thing and they're going to do something else now because they want to change the deal and they lied to us. Well, I just want to return everything now. I'm like, everything? You've only bought Spider-Man. So do you have the other games? And she's like, why the fuck would I have the other games? Everything implies more than one thing, right? Am I crazy for thinking that she must have the other games or want to return games that aren't there? What? So anyway... I go, well, I can return Spider-Man if you want. And the kid's like, no, I just want to play Spider-Man, Mom. And she's like, okay, I guess, I guess we're going to leave. But then I find out that apparently this is a thing. Apparently, apparently there are zombie deer in Texas. That's a thing. It's related to mad cow disease. It's like the deer are still alive, but they're rotting from the inside out. And they've gone feral and will attack you and foam at the mouth. It's a real thing. So that's what my coworker tells me. Probably zombie deer. And I'm like, what do you mean zombie deer? You can't say zombie deer and that be a thing. What? So I'm like, well, at least that's the weirdest customer I'm going to have today. Next customer comes up. Is like, hey, I, I just need to know what the frequency of an Xbox 360 remote is. So that way I can get my ex to stop messing with my brain. There's a lot going on in that. I'm still reeling from the weird coupon slash zombie situation. And I don't know how to respond to that. So I say, 
I don't know, I'm sorry sir, you might be able to Google that. Because, what the fuck do you say to that? There's a lot to unpack there, we're not going to. He leaves, next customer comes up. It's like a fucking chain of crazy people. He asks, straight faced, I want to buy a PS4 because I'm not sure if the PS4 I have is a boy or a girl. How do I tell? And some part of me, some part of me triggered to a, a, a an ancient part of my mind that was able to respond to that. It's as if I, I had the spirits of every guiding ancestor come to me at once and and say, have you checked under the um the power cable where it hooks up with the, the PS4? You might be able to check there. And they're like, you know, I have it. I'm going to go check. And then they left. And I left. All of that happened within the space of an hour. 20 minutes of which was with Zombie Woman. Your job is amazing. I hate it so much. <laughs> Because these people are dead fucking serious. That's what I've learned. That's what I've learned. The sound of the doorbell forces its way into my room. <laughs> what the fuck? Hey. Fantastic morning, isn't it? I'm gonna murder you in your sleep, but then I remembered you have to be awake for me able to get in, so I'm gonna murder you now. Is it okay if you go to sleep? Hmm. Now then, if you'll pardon the interruption, Without waiting for a reply, Taka barged into the room. What do you want? What's up, Taka? No matter how intensely the stormy seas may batter me, I shall not fall as long as my feet are firmly planted. You agree, right? Not sure I understand. And if you can't do it alone, then just find someone to support you. You can support them back. That's how I've overcome any storm. I was thinking about it last night and decided we all need to really come together. That's when I realized every morning from now on, we should have a morning announcement. Everyone should have breakfast together. Down and listen. Shut the fuck up! As I was saying, and now it's the beginning of a fateful day. Please head to the dining hall at your earliest convenience. Got it. That's all for now. I have to go and let everyone else know good news. Uh, why I haven't commented on his eyebrows once? My eyebrows are exactly the same way. Don't be mean to him. He seems, he seems like a cuck. Like, he seems like a guy who's just into the idea of following orders. He's a narc. Wow, everyone's actually here for some reason. Why are you guys following his orders? Looks like everyone's here, so let's begin our first breakfast meeting. Everyone, thank you for coming. To blah, blah, this didn't make time for shit. You dragged me here. I already, already mentioned this earlier, but... In order to get out of here, it's essential that we all cooperate with each other. The first step is breakfast meeting to allow us to become friends and to build trust. So from now on, let's all meet in the dining hall every morning after the morning announcement. Now then, let's eat. You want me to eat breakfast with other people? I've never done that before, but I'm not sure. Uh, uh. Yeah, it's been a while for me too. Well, anyway, did anyone happen to come up with any clues? Science echoed through the dining hall. Seriously? Nothing at all? Hey! Anything. It can be anything on how to get out or who's doing this. Nobody has anything. Are you okay with this? You are going to die. Huh? Do you understand? If you can't stop yourself from showing weakness in front of others, you will die. Okay. I respect you. Because that's a fucking power play right there. Stop it! What the hell? Don't even freaking joke about that. <laughs> I'm not joking. Adaptability is survivability. Did I not say so? You'd better hurry up and adapt to your new life here. What the hell is this? Have you gone completely insane? Adapt to my new life here? Do you have any idea what you're saying? She is like prime murder bait. I thought she was going to be like the fan service character. But like, we already got one of those. And we don't need two of them. You know? We already have the ultimate fan service. So you can die as far as the game's logic is concerned, I think. So yeah, it sounds like your girl wants to live here and hell, more power to her. But shit, shit. no way in hell am I living here. I'm gonna get out of here. I don't give a shit. <laughs> sure, feel free. Uh, so nobody has any clues. What the heck? What's the fan service girl you ask? She's gonna blow my nose, unrelated to anything on screen right now. Uh, anyway, one thing I can tell you is who's behind all this. Someone who's totally weird and messed up. Really just... I thought it was a youth pastor. Why would we be trapped in here in the first place? Hey, listen. Well, sure, it could be something like that. But for right now, actual clues are... Uh, um, huh. What's up? Um, 
If you think in terms of people who are really abnormal or bizarre, do you think that the person responsible this could be a certain murderous fiend? What? Certain murderous fiend? Sure. Do you have some idea who might be behind all this? Well, I mean, I can't really say for certain, but certainty is not concerned right now. Allow whatever. Just say random bullshit. The Unabomber? Is it the Unabomber? I knew it was that slut. Okay, well, have you guys heard of Genocide Jack? I mean, that serial killer that's been on the news all over the internet. <laughs> Monstrous villain that's murdered scores of victims in brutally bizarre fashions. The word bloodlust was left at each murder scene, written in the victim's own blood. Whoever he is, he's like a ghost. He strikes without warning and disappears without a trace. On the internet, they started calling him a cuck. Genocide Jack, that about covers it, I think. They say he's claimed over a thousand victims. How? That's just an urban legend, though, right? I mean, even like 10 people would be totally insane. Anyway, whoever Genocide Jack is, he's obviously some kind of super crazy killer. Huh? And if he really is this ultimate psycho, it wouldn't be surprised if he put us together like, for something like this. But like I said, I can't be certain. I don't have any evidence or anything, it's just a thought. But if they're the killer, isn't that like a killer of a problem for us? No, I read that right, it was just stupid. Yeah. It's okay, everything's positively 100%, without a doubt, absolutely going to be okay. Just gonna go ahead and screen cap that for later, yeah? Cause help's gonna be here soon. I'm sure of it. Help? Cause, I mean... We've been stuck here for a few days, right? Nobody's been able to contact us, so I'm pretty sure they're getting worried. I bet they're already called the police. <laughs> what's hey, what's this? up? Police? You're putting your faith in the police? That's against the rules, you're dead! Bastard. What the hell are you doing here? Guys, seriously, do you understand what the role of the police exists to fill? All they're really good for is being a foil, played against the villain or anti-hero or, or evil organization. The bad guys come along and destroy them. That shows just how badass they really are. Are you sure you want to rely on such an unreliable group of losers? Monokuma says fuck the police. I mean, come on, if you really, really want to get out of here, all you gotta do is kill. <laughs> what the hell? What the hell are you laughing at? You know? I'm just impressed at the total commitment to this whole act. What What the fuck? Do you think this is a joke still? What? So, Mr. Serial Killer Psycho Freak Bastard, what the hell do you want? That's a pretty long name, German, maybe. We know who you really are. Well, maybe if I ignore him, he'll just go away. You son of a bitch. Don't you ignore me, asshole. Don't punch him. He'll explode. Remember that. And I'm in the same room as you. Go into another room and punch him. Okay, okay. Let's get back to business. Your life here has already begun. And a couple of days have gone by. Nobody's killing anybody. I thought all you kids were lazy and selfish. Here you are working together and I'm totally bored. There's nothing you can say that'll make us start killing each other. I Wait, I think yes. Ding ding, I figured it out. The mysterious ingredients are here, right? Right people, right place. So why hasn't anyone killed anyone yet? That's what I couldn't understand. But then I realized there's one very important piece missing. Weapons? Motivation? What are you? <laughs> if you want to know, I'll tell you, it's a motive. So simple. I just have to give everyone a motive. Stop fucking around. What the fuck are you talking about? Hey, um... Oh, by the way, there's something I want to show you guys. You son of a bitch. I have a little video I'd like you all to see. Ooh. But don't worry, it's not some pervy adult video or anything. Seriously, it's nothing like that. I didn't even think it was, but now I do. Now I think you've got a picture of me jerking it. A special video for each of you that shows what's going on outside the school. Outside the school? What are you talking about? Oh, Master's so impatient today. Why don't you just watch it and find out? Here's Here in the school, there's a very specific place you can go that has everything that you need to watch the video. Good, so we can go watch the video now. But before I'd like to do that, I'd like to know, what are you? Why would you do something like this? What do you want from us? What do I want from you? Well, if you must know, I want you to kill. Despair, that's all. I mean, like... This game doesn't work on millennials. Can I just say that? Like, he's offering food, shelter, fitness gym, entertainment to some respect, uh, friends, social activity. Um, it's really not a bad gig. Like, I explained the plot of this game to Tilda, and she was like, so why would they leave? And I'm like, I know. I know. You don't even have to work. You get everything. If you want to know more about that, you'll have to figure it out yourselves. Do whatever you need to uncover the mystery hidden within the school. I won't try and stop you. Because to be honest, it's entertaining as heck to watch you guys search so desperately for answers. So I guess I want amusement from you too. 
but you can't see your cat ever again. Cause that sucks ass. Uh, left before we could find out anything useful. Is that right? Really? I think we learned something very useful. He has no intention of standing in our way of the pursuit of truth. Interesting. However, perhaps. But what about that video he mentioned? I'm very curious to see what's on it. But let's point this out. If we watch the video, it's going to be something that wants to make at least one of us murder another one of us. Should we watch such a video? Because that seems like a bad idea. Same here. Okay, so started glancing around the hall, but his glance landed on me and he stopped. Oh, yeah. Check this out for us, would you? Why me? Yo. Because you're closest to the door and that's the rule, huh? Rule? Jesus Christ. Hey, hey. Hey, 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 hey! Hey! Stop fucking around. See how passionately I'm begging you? That's the, what's the big deal? Just check it out real quick. Guess I'll get going Hell then. Yeah. Oh, you won. If Makoto is going, I'm going with him. It's not safe to walk around in this place alone. Yo. Where is it? Where's the AV room? I've already lost it. There it is. I found it. There's something inside this cardboard box. It's condoms. A bunch of DVDs. All right. Yeah, that's second guess. Each one of them has been labeled with someone's name. There's a video for each of us he mentioned. Hold on a second. I better go tell everyone. The DVDs in front of me had robbed me of all awareness. I was rooted in place. I stared down. I sat down and started intent, stared intently at the darkened screen. And then... <gasps> I yelled without realizing it. My heart started racing because I knew what I saw on that monitor. It was my family. You getting picked to attend Hope's Peak Academy is like a dream come true. Make sure you do your best. I'm so proud of you, son. But remember, don't push yourself too hard. Are you really watching this, Makoto? Good luck. If it had ended there, it would have been fine. A message of love and support. After leaving my family behind to attend Hope's Peak, it would have given me hope, given me strength. If this was a normal school, I would have been happy, if a little embarrassed. With my family's support to rely on, I would have been motivated to even do better. But here, now, it's totally different. It wasn't living an ordinary school life, so I had a pretty strong feeling that this video wasn't going to end there. I hated having that feeling, but it turned out I was absolutely right. This time I couldn't even make a sound. My voice just died. Where did everyone go? Looks like a war zone or something. As if in reply, a voice came floating out of the speakers. I recognized the voice. Of course, it was him. Makoto Naegi accepted into Hope Geek Academy and his family who supported such a But it seems like something's happened to this family's well-being. Oh boy, this is bad. What could have possibly happened to this family's well-being? Look for the answer after graduation. What's this? What happened to everyone? I started trembling. I could feel the fear and anger building up inside of me like hot magma. God damn it, Ron Paul! I slammed my fist into the desk over and over again. A single thought was racing through my mind. What else? How could I think about anything else? I have to get out of here. I have to get out right now. I need to make sure everyone's safe. Makoto? What happened? Make sure who's safe. I noticed everyone standing in the entrance to the AV room. They stared at me, faces full of confusion. Um... What's going on? Without a word, I pointed at the cardboard box. Is, it... is that what Monokumo was talking about? What does this mean? What's on them? They all gather around the box. Each of them grabs the DVD with their name on it. One by one, they rush the monitor. It didn't take time long for them to react. What the fuck? This can't be real, right? It has to be fake. Hey, There's on. no way this is real, right? Ha ha ha! I know, they ruined my count! As soon as I saw the reactions, I knew they'd all seen something like I had seen. We didn't all watch together because that would have been convenient. Nobody bothered even trying to hide their fear and confusion except for her. Now, she was totally calm. See. See, this is what he meant by motive. He wants to fuel our desire to leave so that we were more likely to start killing each other. Yes, indeed. It's the classic prisoner's dilemma. Hmm? Huh? It's a gambling thing. Let me use an example. Imagine two countries are on the brink of war, but both countries want peace, and each commits a scaling back of their forces as a sign of good faith. But there's a chance that one country may betray the other, so each country fears the lowering of their guard. The result is that neither scales back their forces, and they both end up betraying each other. Do you understand? In other words, the fear of invisible treachery becomes the greatest enemy of stability. 
It almost sounds like us right now. Yeah, that's why I fucking brought it up. I don't know. I just felt like telling you random psychological fact. Everyone says they'll work together, but in our hearts, we're all afraid that someone might betray us. Don't put those awful thoughts in our head. That's exactly what they want us to do. Huh? You can't say that. Maybe they're, you're just thinking once everyone drops their guard, you can just, what? what? This is exactly what Monokuma or whoever's behind this wants. They want us to fight, don't you see? That's right. We all need to calm down. Okay, then. Maybe we should all just start by talking. Maybe we just talk about what we saw. That'll help everyone get it out of our systems. No. Wow, your nails are fucking long. Jesus Christ, girl. Besides, I think we're all super curious, right? wonder what was on everyone's videos. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't curious. Hey, Sakya. What was in your video? What's, What's your wrong? Just hurry up and tell us. Gently placed my hand on her shoulder. Stamp it. She pushed my hand away and suddenly ran off. Huh? Sakya? Let her go. I can't do that. I have to go make sure that she's okay. <laughs> I hate romantic comedies like this. I don't care what happens to her personally. What? It's because you're totally thoughtless. Um... She must have had a really expensive catch. Yeah, you're right. Holy fuck. Rev mispronouncing Sayoka every time is quality. Is he saying it wrong on purpose? That time I was. Every other time I'm just really dumb. Then why don't you go and do whatever you think you have to? We don't all have to stick together, right? I hope you are well. Speaking of which, I have my own things to take care of. Goodbye. Everyone went their separate ways. I don't have time to worry about them right now. I have to go find Sayaka. Oh, there she is. How you doing? The music makes me think that she's doing really good. I found her in one corner of an empty classroom. Sitting in a chair, hands on her knees, staring absently at the floor. Looking good! She seems well. She looked like maybe she was upset or angry or no. She didn't have any expression at all. There's nothing on her face you could call emotion. As her original mask had been stripped away. Siyoku? Uh, uh. Yeah, I'm fine. Actually, no, how could it possibly be fine? Uh, uh. What did we do to end up like this? How could it end up like this? It was only a kiss. It was only a kiss. Why are they doing such terrible things to us? I went out. Hi. Let me out of here right now. Calm down. She thrashed around. I grabbed her by the shoulders. I understand. I know how you're feeling right now. When I think of what might have happened to my family. But now more than ever, I have to stay calm. This is exactly what they want. They want us to lose our composure and stop thinking rationally. Think about it. Those videos have to be fake. Because had those things really happened, people out there would be in an uproar. Families, the police, everyone. Right? Just calm down, okay? Otherwise, we've already lost. I knew I was trying to convince her myself just as much as her. I kept repeating those words to myself to clear away the images that they had been burned in my brain. Be calm, okay? Just be calm. As long as we work together, I'm sure we'll find some way out of here. Might even come before that. Help might even come before that. Good. Martial law was declared of because of couch destruction. Everyone, stay in your houses. Someone's house got fucked up. And we're gonna kill the bastard who did it. We're gonna have riots in the street. There's gonna be people on the news being like, how this, how could this happen? Couches will be locked up, but what if there isn't a way out? What if hope never comes? If that happens, then I'll just get you out of here myself, no matter what it takes. When I said that, I paused. I had no idea what had come over me. Sayaka? Please, help. Her voice was small and shaky. Why, Why is this happening to me? To kill or be killed? I just can't take this anymore. Sayaka. <laughs> when she finally raised her face up from my chest, she looked at me with those big wet eyes of hers. Makoto. Can, can I, can I believe what you just said? Huh? That you'll help me get out? No matter what it takes? Absolutely. Makoto. You're the only one I can so trust. So no please, no matter what happens, happens please always please be there for always you. Be there for oh. Me. Of course I'll be there for you, no matter what. I'll always be on your side. I mean, you are my assistant after all. I have no idea what that sounds like for y'all, but I basically put the mic in my mouth. Makoto. Thank you, Makoto. Hearing you say that, I feel like I can keep going. I... 
I can get through this as long as you're here with me. Because I'm your assistant. That smile I had come to know so well has returned to her face. Felt a little forced, but still. It was a huge improvement on how she was before. Hey! Hey! It's standing up! <laughs> Makoto, it's standing up! What's standing up? Come on. Do you even have to ask? Your flagpole! Why are you pointing out my boner? Get the hell out of here! No, no, no! I want to join in! Three away with a fucking animatronic bear! My fucking dreams! Damn it, if you won't leave, then just tell us what the hell is up with those videos! I was about to all come out. It's gonna come out, my pristine, pure white stuffing! My honest, innocent stuffing is about to come gushing out. I balled up my fist, took aim, and swung as hard as I could. I never put so much energy into a single motion before in my life. I leaned back and channeled all my power, letting go of everything I had. Are you okay? If I hadn't avoided your punch, you would have just violated school regulations. But boy, you are slow, 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 slow. I could have downed a thousand dollar full course dinner by the time it took for you to finish your swing. Speed, agility, alertness, passion, boldness, sense of despair, antagonization, it's all lacking. Um, what the heck was that just now? He just wanted to mess with us. Uh, um, well, for now, do you just want to head back? Yeah. Monokoma had come along and swiftly destroyed the good mood we had just created. Saka and I headed out of our dorms. Just realized jingling the, the keys on my belts is probably not a good sound to be making literally after that. I want to take this as official backing that fucking is allowed. You should get some rest, Saka. You look pretty shaken. Sorry. Sorry for making you worry about me. You're right. I'm going to lay down for a bit. With a nod and a small bow, she disappeared into her room. Now on my own, I headed off to tell everyone that Sakia uh, was okay. Once that was done, I decided to head back to my room. It was hard to think after watching that deranged video, I needed some rest of my own. Jeez, seriously, what's going on here? There's just so many problems. I can't even decide what the biggest problem is. That we're trapped here? That what I saw in the video might be real? Monokuma? What the mastermind has in store for us? Or are we our biggest problems? I want to get out of here. But I could never kill someone. Do all the others feel the same? Yeah, it's definitely the biggest problem right now. Huh? When I opened my eyes, they darted immediately to the clock. It's almost 10 o'clock. I fell asleep without even realizing it. Nighttime's about to start. So how come someone's here? There's a very good stopping point coming up. Okay. Sorry. I'm really sorry to come by so late. Siaka? What are you doing out so late? That's when I noticed. Her body was trembling. Is everything okay? So strange. I'm sorry to bother you, but something really weird just happened. What's weird? Just a little while ago, I was laying in, down in my room, and all of a sudden my door started rattling and shaking. Her voice sounded like it had all the air had been squeezed out of her lungs. Just hearing her talk made me tense up. I was so scared. It was like someone was trying to force the door open. The door was locked, so they couldn't get in, of course. And they started shaking the door harder and harder. I was so scared I couldn't even move. So what happened? After a while, I just stopped. I let some time go by, then got up and opened the door to check inside. There was nobody outside. Someone tried to force her way into your room? But who would be doing something like that? It's not like I'm suspicious of anyone here, but it still makes me nervous. Can I stay here with you tonight? And murder. What if something like that happened in the middle of the night? What would I do then? You don't have to worry about that, right? We can't go outside during the nighttime. Well, that's just a promise we made, right? If someone decided to break that promise, then why don't you stay in my room tonight? Would that make you feel any better? Huh? Okay. He's a teenager. His head's full of stupid. He sees an opportunity to be a hero. He's gonna get murdered. All that it said in the school regulations is that we had to sleep in the dorm rooms, right? It didn't say specifically which room each person had to sleep in, hey, so... Um... But two people sharing one room is, you know... Oh, jeez, I'm so sorry. I didn't even think about that. Honestly, I didn't even cross my mind. Uh, um. I know, me either, but it's not like I mind the idea, but if you don't mind, maybe we could just switch rooms for the night? Switch rooms? Well, if it helps put your mind at ease, then that's totally fine with me. But I don't mind you staying in my room, but are you sure you're okay with me staying in, your, staying in yours? 
like that doesn't concern you? It's fine, I trust you. In that case, then, gonna jerk off in your bed. Cause I'm a creep. I'm gonna get murdered. She's gonna fucking murder me. If we're gonna trade rooms, we better trade keys, too. That's right, we better trade keys. I wanna make like a tier listing, but if I do, I know I'm gonna have to look up images in order to do it because I don't remember anyone's fucking name. Like I said, I'm psychic. No, you. Something resembling a smile made its way onto her face. Thank goodness. Looks like she's already started to get back to normal. It's okay, we better trade okay. keys then. Yep, let's do it. Let's do exactly what you said. Exchanging the keys. I went and looked back up at her again. There's another worried expression uh, there. Um. Please be careful. If someone comes to the door, don't ma open it no matter what. I won't. Same goes for you. No matter who it is, don't open the door for anyone. <laughs> even if I'm sure it's you, I absolutely won't open it. Otherwise, what's the point of even switching? Oh, just so you know, my do bathroom door tends to get stuck. There's a little trick to opening it. You have to turn the knob and lift up uh, on the door when you pull out. Just do that and the door should open, no problem. Um. Okay, but the showers don't work during the nighttime anyway, right? All right, I totally forgot. And about what I said, when I said I was psychic, it really was a joke. Honestly, I'm just very perceptive. Okay. Yep. I believe that. Good night, then. See you in the morning. He's so dumb. She gave me one, uh, one last parting smile and headed off to my room. I looked around as soon as I got out of the hall. Everyone else's doors were closed. There was no sign of life. Good, there's nobody here. Making sure no one was around to spot me, I rushed into Sakia's room. It really doesn't look any different than mine. Smells nice, though. Time to investigate everything and be a creep. If I remember right, all the girls' private bathrooms have locks on them. I'm a little reluctant to go in. It's kind of weird to dig through other people's trash, but I couldn't help but take a quick peek. That's... Wasn't any doubt about it. That was the DVD with her name on it that we found in the AV room. It reminds me, I never did get a chance to figure out what's on her video. Probably best if I wait until she brings it up again. I don't think Sakia would like me snooping around too much. I'd probably just go to bed soon. Sakia sent Maybe it'll bring me sweet dreams. Oh! Oh! Feel a little bit better than before I fell asleep. Just remembered I promised to eat breakfast with everyone. But I better get going. Wow, I lived! Hello, Makoto! Good morning! Can you believe it? It was the very first one here this morning. Good morning. Hey, Makoto! Morning! Suppose I'm early. All the ones who showed up a little late. Yo. Sorry. My makeup would not cooperate this morning. Ah, well. Apologies, ladies and gentlemen. My morning at duty. Shit. Took a little longer than usual. For the types that were with more relaxed sense of time. Most high schoolers fall into this category. Finally, those who kept everyone waiting forever. Indeed. I suppose I'm late. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. My bad, my bad. What's your problem? Yo. Uh, didn't oversleep, just so you know. Nope, nope, just... I blame the Bermuda Triangle. God, he seems like the kind of dude I could be bros with outside of this shit, but... Mm, but regardless, everyone had arrived. No, we're missing one. At least, that's how it was supposed to go. Hmm. Wait, aren't we missing some people? Yeah, Sakya aren't here yet. What? What's going on here? Did something happen? Yo. Hey man, have you seen Sieka? Why would I be late? I just came from the my room here. Um. Did she forget about her breakfast promise? However. I got a sense that she has her stuff together. Listening to everyone talk. Like that, a small dark speck of unease rose up inside me. That speck started to grow quickly. And then I was hard. I need to go. I have to check on her. To, the words had barely left my lips before I flew out into the hall. Where I headed was first was my room, where I'd let Siaka save for a single night, where she was supposed to be safe. But over the course of that one night, the room had completely been transformed. What the hell? It's a replica sword that I brought back for self-defense. It's been taken out of its sheath. Where is she? Keychain on the ground. It has my name on it. it must be mine. I mean, I'm just going to find her because she's in there. We know she's in there. Let's... Take a look inside. Yeah, how the how the fuck did I get in? It took me a second to realize that I was screaming when I saw it dug its way through my eyes and buried itself inside my brain. And then, 
And then... Everything went black. In the beta version, it was red, but they toned it down for release. They s the censorship show it could be 15 plus in the... The titties, though. Everyone keeps saying 11037. I don't know what that means. I've seen that number once before in the comments of my video, but I don't know what it means. It's a meme, apparently. So 11037, y'all. It's like 420, but uh, instead you murder someone. Uh, let me check the, uh, let me check the art. Real quick, though, I want to show you something. Let's go ahead and just, like, slap this, this puppy on the screen. Whoop, 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 whoop. Uh, let me show you the arts that we got. Uh, all three of these are from, uh, the same person, Sugar Shock. Anyway, uh, some art from Sugar Shock. It's an animated, uh, uh, pixel art thing. Apparently, this is what Monokuma was supposed to look like originally. Um... I'm not going to look up 11037 on the off chance that it is A, hentai, or B, spoilers. It's going to be one of the two. Possibly both. And then we got this one from uh, Sugar Shock as well. It's it's two bouncy boys. Who's the one on the left, though? Munokomo and my cre own creation, Mononeko. I guess that makes sense. It's a cat, but it's a demon cat. And then we got this last one from Sugar Shock, and it's of um, All Alone on a Wednesday Night. God, pathetic. My own despair beast bastard acting smug. It's really good. That's crochet, right? He's 12 inches. He's huge. Hello. How are you guys doing? I realize I could have played anything, but I'm I'm kind of invested in the story now. It's investigation time. It's like the first time and I was looking at all the tags that um that are on Twitch for this, so it tags it for like certain types of games, like visual novel, which I knew about. But it's tagged as, like, everything. It's tagged as, like, a shooter rhythm game, an investigation game. When I opened my eyes, I found myself staring at a huge ceiling. The ceiling I remembered seeing before. Oh. Oh, you're awake. Are you okay? You're unconscious, dude. I had to carry you back here. Motoko unconscious count two. All right. No surprise considering what happened. What happened? Her highlighter exploded and it freaked you out. He's kind of a nerd about, like, office supplies. Um... Hey, are you okay? So it wasn't a dream? What I saw was real. Hm. That's right, it really did happen. Seisyuksuksaka is dead. Thank God she's dead, to be honest, because I don't know how to pronounce it. This guy needs to die as well, because I don't know how to pronounce his name either. Byakuya Togami. A deep, dark despair worked its way through my body and then exploded out of me. She's the ultimate court. It was favorite highlighter, too, yes. I shut up and took off running. Where do you think you're going? I have to see for myself. I have to see if Sakia is... If, if Sakia is... Just give up. You can check once, twice, a thousand times. She's dead. She's fucking dead. No, I have to see for myself. You did, and that's why you passed out the first time, dumbass. Why? Listen to us, man. What why? do you think's gonna happen if you go out there? Well, what good is it going to do for you to sit around here? I mean, why are we hanging out in the gym at a time like this? A friend, Sisuku, she's, she's dead. Dead. When I said that, it finally hit me. I realized that she was really gone, and so was my favorite highlighter. Calm down. Well, none of us want to be here right now, either. Then why? Shouldn't it be obvious? Monokuno told us all to come here. Well, hold on. Don't talk like that. We all protested it. I mean, we remember the terrible price you had to pay, but so... I'm the one who convinced them to come. Right now, we need to do whatever he says. We're his prisoners, right? It's not a good idea to defy him without reason. We don't need to make any more sacrifices than we already have. Why should we listen to anything he has to say? It's obvious he's the one who killed Suku. I would never do that. If you can believe anything, you can believe that. He's here again. Hey. Unless someone violates the school rule of regulation, I absolutely will not interfere. I can promise you that I- Why is no one suspecting me? Like, why is no one going like, Hey, she was in your room. What the fuck? But then who did it? Who killed her? Come on! You already know the answer. The one who killed her is one of you. No one had a reply for that. I mean, like, honestly, power play if he did kill her in order to get us to start going absolutely apeshit. 
That would be fucked up. One of us killed Siaka? Don't be stupid, that's... What's the matter? You guys all look like you've seen a dove get shot up with a Gatling gun. <laughs> Don't remember what I told you when this all began? <laughs> One of you decided to kill Siaka so you could graduate. Someone's just following the rules. There's nothing wrong with that. You're lying, right? Of course he's lying. I'm telling you, he killed her. Wrong. Nope, sorry. One of you is a bona fide killer. And if they wanted, the one who did it could testify to that little fact. What? Without thinking, I looked around at everyone. They all had the same look on their faces. Everyone looked at each other with a combination of fear, suspicion, and confusion. Uh, um, Are you serious? What, what someone killed this? someone? <laughs> it's amazing what some people are capable of. Just hold on. Hey, hang on. Don't just assume that he's telling the truth. Stop talking. That's enough. Before we do anything else, I'd like to confirm something with the stuffed animal here. <laughs> if one of us really did kill her, that person gets to graduate from school, right? Huh? Come on. Don't play dumb. That's what you said, isn't it? If you kill someone, you get to leave. <laughs> what? Why are you laughing? <laughs> it's because... <laughs> naive. You're just so naive. You think it's really that easy? You just kill someone, you get the waltz out of here? No, no, no. The real thing has just begun. The real thing? Now then. Are you ready to explain the second part of the rule regarding graduation? Would have been nice to know. Just like I explained before, you must kill someone if you want to leave. However, even if you do that, there's still one more part of the agreement you have to uphold, remember? Then perhaps... You're referring to rule number six of the school regulations. If you are the blacken that committed the murder, you cannot be found out by the other students. That is what you're talking about, is it not? In other words... Bingo. And if that's not enough to kill someone, you have to actually get away with it. Which just naturally means that you need a system in place to assess whether or not it, it's been gotten away with. So a certain amount of time after the murder has taken place, a class trial will begin. Class trial? Hmm. It'll begin in a few hours after the murder. Everyone will gather together, including the black and tool who committed the murder. And they and the spotless students will engage in one big debate showdown. During the trial, you'll have to present your arguments about who you think the Blackened is. And once everything comes to an end, the outcome will be decided by popular vote. If the answer you've arrived at is correct, only the one that disturbed your peace will be punished. The rest may continue their communal life. However, if you choose poorly, then the one who got away with murder will survive, and the rest of you will receive your punishment. So punishment so far has been exploding. Which of course means your school life will come to an end. As far as class trial rules go, that's all there is to so it. So I guess there aren't alternate ends where like a handful of people get out and you're like, ah, oh, fuck. Yes, the fully voiced over sections. I know some of you guys don't like the dub. I think it's okay. Um, it's not the best. I have put up with really shitty dubs. Like, y'all are fucking spoiled nowadays. Back in the day, anime dubs sucked ass. They're better now. This is still old school, but, like, this is not the worst thing. There are worse subs, and I have ADD and, and fucking dyslexia. It's, it's gonna be bad. So, um, what exactly is this punishment you keep talking about? Well, to put it simply, it's execution. So, yeah, that would confirm that there's only one ending as far... Well, I can't lose this. I mean, I guess I can lose this, but it's not like we have to replay the whole game up till this point again. And by execution, you mean... Execution is... Execution. Execution! Electric chair. <laughs> Poison gas. <laughs> Torn apart like a paper plane in a hurricane. Which, yes, we can make happen. If we get the culprit right then only they die, but if we get it wrong, all the rest of us get executed? What a smart little champion you are. Look at you implying you didn't do it without actually saying it. It's basically what an outside world says a lay judge system, or inquisition type thing. It means you'll be deciding who you think the killer is, but judge carefully because all your lives are on the line. Okay, let me just add the rule I just described to your handbook. Make sure you keep it in mind. Wait, hold on a second. You You're freaking about? insane, you know that? Huh? What the? A class trial? What the hell is that? I don't want anything to do with it. What's this? Why not? Stop it. What do you mean, why not? Why do I have to waste my time trying to figure out who murdered someone? What? Are you saying you're not going to participate in the trial? The only punishment awaits such blasphemy. What, the hell are you talking about? what punishment? Hmm. 
I might, I don't know, throw you in a deep, dark, scary prison or something. Say so whatever you want. I'm not going to be a part of this. Don't, don't be so selfish. You're the one being selfish. Kill whoever you want. It's got nothing to do with me. Evil standing right here before me. I'm trembling with fear. But I won't give in to such evil. It's my style to stick it out and resist till the very end. If you really want to get out of here, you'll have to go through me first. And as he said that, he came charging at us. Oh, it was more of a waddle. But then... Interesting ob idea for a camera angle. This could have been any other camera angle. And it could have actually been worse, to be honest. Don't say foot like that. I know what you guys are into. Are you enjoying yourself now? Are you? Violence against Headmaster Monokuma is not allowed. You violated a school regulation. I invoke the mighty summon spell. Help to me, godly spear, Gunyir. Oh, okay. Well, I think it wasn't her. <laughs> Because that would be really easy trial to go through with. So that's two dead. Wow, holy fuck. That's, um... Real quick, I just... I need to... Alright, cool. This just want to make sure I read that right. Supposed to... Why me? Suddenly, right at the end, her eyes shot wide open. And just like that, she never moved again. No way. What the? I don't. This can't be real. Yeah. Well now. Now I'm painfully aware of the great power and meaning of a promise. I really wanted to keep a corpse from popping up for no good reason, you know. Yeah. But I guess they all need to be taught a lesson after all. What an amazing promise. But now you guys understand, right? Now you see just how serious I am. Defy me and you get shot full of holes, exploded, buried alive, disintegrated, etc. So, if you don't want that to happen to you, you best obey those school regulations. It's not really all that shocking. She just died, that's all. She just went and died. It's no more remarkable than the of the human race. <laughs> it's the natural... As the eventual end of the world itself. This isn't super some superhero comic, so it's not like when you die, you just didn't really die. This is reality. No, it's an anime game. No, it's it's actually an anime game, but close. Close. I've been told anime is real. I do not know as if I believe these things. Anyway, none of that matters now. I have something I'd really like to give you to help you for the search for the blackens. A little file that has all the information I've gathered about the death in question. I like to call it... I mean, naturally, you guys aren't experts with this kind of thing, so you can only do so much with the corpse. So instead, I've gathered out everything I know about the circumstances and cause of death. What's that? How do I know the cause of death, you ask? Because the surveillance cameras picked up the whole thing. I gotta see it all go down. So you know who killed Siaka. <laughs> of course I do. If I didn't, I couldn't possibly pass a fair and accurate judgment during the trial, now could I? That's a good point. The judge has to be able to make a proper decision. That's somehow are comforting. Well? Now then, please put your full effort behind the investigation. After all, you don't have any choice but to give it your best shot. Seriously, you don't have a choice. Okay, so we'll meet up for class trial in a little while. And with that, Monokuma disappeared again. He left us stunned and confused. He left us at a total loss. He left us with Junko's dead body growing colder right in front of us. I swear to God, if the fat guy calls dibs, I'm just gonna murder him on the spot. And everyone can just be like, nope, I don't know what happened. Nobody said a word. In fact, Saka and Junko were dead with a huge shock, of course. Well, there's more to it than that. There's the idea that one of us had actually murdered someone. And if we didn't find out who it was, we'd all die here. We found ourselves in a situation we couldn't help but look at each other with open suspicion. It was the worst situation imaginable. And yet, even with such pervasively terrible situation, she didn't show the slightest hint that it had gotten to her. Hey. There's no time to wallow your depression. The worst thing we can do right now is lose all faith in each other. That would lead to 
the same disastrous result as having a total faith in everyone else. What? Huh? In other words... Cooperation is absolutely key at this point. Who you decide to trust or not trust is, of course, up to you. <laughs> Continue to think about and talk about the deceased is certainly it's going to help at all. Say, saying stuff like that is just... How many times have I told you? Anyone who can't adapt will die. This is the only thing that awaits those who are unable to or unwilling to adapt. <laughs> if it happens to you, you'll only have yourself to blame. That's terrible. That's an awful thing to say, especially after what just happened. Just a second. Right now, exposing the killer is the most important thing. Because we don't, if we don't, we're all going to die here. <laughs> She's right. We need to begin our search right away. Either way, we can't run away from the situation, so we have no choice but to move forward. What the heck? We have to do it, I guess. What other choice do we have? No way. No way in hell am I going to let someone kill me. All right, damn it. Let's do this. We have to do it. Everyone kept repeating that sentiment. They were using it as a mantra to give themselves strength. But they're right. We just have to do this. No matter how much we do or do not have a choice, if that's what it takes to survive, then that's what we'll have to do. On top of that, there was one something I needed to find out. I had to know why Saka had to die. Why she had to be the one. I'm terrified to find out, but still, I have to know. Otherwise, I'd never be able to accept her death. Which is why I don't have any choice. I have to do this. Yep, she's dead. She really is dead. That one's going in the fucking folder. I don't know why you even bothered to check after those injuries and losing that much blood. Frankly, I'd be shocked if she did survive something like that. Hold on. Hold on, wait a second! She's dead? That means... That means everything that's happened this far is real? This isn't a... Oh, you stupid bitch. Someone save me! Let me out of here! We... No, 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 no. We went over that like three days ago. There's no way out. We've been searching. There's no way out. Your You're just problem? accepting that now? You know, actually, that's a good point. He's 21 years old and dumb as rocks because he's still in high school. I was looking through the Monokuma file received and noticed something very obvious and very unusual. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Go ahead and take a look and notice anything interesting about where Sakya died? She died in Motoko Storm. Uh, that's right! <laughs> then could it be? Everyone all at once turned their gaze toward me. Hold on a second, you got it all wrong! For just one night, I traded rooms with her. I did it because she was afraid. <laughs> You expect us to believe that? Just tell us the truth. The look on everyone's eyes had done a complete 180 from just a few minutes earlier. Feeling a suspicion and fear had returned, and in other words, you think I did it? So then. Are we all done talking? We need to begin our investigation soon. At this point, we should split up. We need to get to the bottom of this and find out who killed Siaka. Do I have any opinion on who the murderer is? I will get to that in a minute. I would like to collect some clues. I assume it's not her as much as I think it is because she's... Like, kind of acting as tutorial bitch, which means she's not murder bitch. You see what I mean? If we get this wrong, well, do I really have to say anymore? I'd rather you didn't know. Everyone pray for good luck. That's true. We might as well at least do a check. Even if I wanted to, I couldn't help investigate. Wait, why not? I'm not good with blood. All it takes for is one glimpse and I'd black oh, yeah. out. That's a fucking lie, because you're standing in a room with a dead-ass body that's bleeding all over the goddamn place. But sure. Does anyone really think I'm the killer? How did it turn out like this? Seriously, they've got it all wrong. Why do they have to suspect me? Remember to try and keep the spoilers to a, uh, a minimum. Estimated to be around 1.30 a.m. The body was discovered in Mutsuko's room in the dormitory. All evidence suggests the death took place in the bathroom. The cause of death was a stab room wound to the abdomen. There was also an injury to her right wrist. Specifically, the wrist appears to have suffered a fracture. We have no choice but to push forward if we want to find out what happened. Somehow we'll find out the truth, so we can all survive. And as for Sakya, I'll have to find out how she was killed. Okay, I better examine the state of my room a little closer. That might reveal something new. All right, limp roller. Looks like uh, there was lay l way less than there was before. Did she somehow dirty my room? Uh, see how, okay, that's suspicious. She might've cleaned up. It has my name on it. This must be my room key. If I remember correctly, we have to trade keys. How did I get in here? How the fuck did anyone get in here? It, wouldn't it be if you murdered someone in the room, they would never be able to get to them? Yes, how did the killer get in the room in the first place? How did I get in the room? No, that seems impossible. I guess it was left unlocked. 
Same goes for you, no matter who it is, don't open. Maybe she dropped the key somewhere and someone else grabbed it or something. No, that's not possible either. She was in here when we switched rooms, and with how scared she was, she wouldn't have gone walking around. So it could be that she dropped it. So how did the killer? Okay. It's been taken out of its sheath. I actually looked at the blade until now. I wouldn't be surprised if it's coated in gold too. On top of that, some of the gold plating has come off on parts of the blade and the handle. The handle is especially missing a lot of the coating. Remembering the coating sticks to you even if you touch it a little bit. Okay. So is anyone gold handed? Can we catch the- Oh, you- Oh, she was straight up hiding behind that dude there. I'm just checking everything. Yeah, seriously, Mondo? God. We aren't exactly what? in the mood for you to be fucking around with furniture, right? So you haven't used yours either yet, what? right? Not just me. Nobody's busted theirs out as far as I can tell. Actually, we were talking about it By yesterday. None of the guys have opened their tool kits yet, because, like, why the hell would we? Okay. Yeah, I would say that's evidence of a struggle. Wait. That would not have been possible. That's true. You can't hear through the wall. Don't you remember? All of our rooms are completely soundproof. So something could have happened in the room right next to you, and there's no way you could know. Evidence of struggle has been added to your truth bullet section in your handbook. I'm just gonna investigate everything that I can click on. Does that mean it was used in the attack somehow? And plus, the sword's been taken out of the sheath, so... Some scratches on the sheath might have been made by something sharp. But how did the sheath get scratched up in the first place? If someone used the sword in the struggle, it doesn't make sense that the sheath would get damaged. Yes, it does. A sheath can be used as, like, an offhand parry. So, yeah. That means if you're gonna attack someone with a sword, the first thing you would do is unsheath it. A heavy sheath like this would only get in the way. So why are there scratches on the sheath? You know, I realized something while I was on guard duty. The killer could have already destroyed some evidence, right? Before anyone found the body, I mean. There's trash in here in the dorms, right? They could have tossed some stuff out here. Yeah, it's definitely possible. That dirty bastard. Anyone who raises their hand to a woman is scum that deserves death. That's what my brother taught me. So if I ever find that son of a bitch who did this, I'm gonna pound their goddamn face in. But what if it was girl who did it? Yo. That'll all get sorted out when the time comes. Let's get that the uh, respect women shoes going through that guy right there. I'm not trying to make assumptions like that. I simply don't know whether or not you did or did not do this. Whatever decision the rest of you come up with, I will follow your lead. I see. What are you doing? Isn't it obvious? N no. Not really. I forget that I look like a total fucking tool. I'm searching. Searching? Did you lose a contact or something? Why do you- what do you- what? I don't know what she was doing exactly in this room where there was someone murdered. But a few seconds later, she suddenly stood up straight and said, Listen. Are you a clean freak? No, I don't think so, but what? Nodding. She glanced around my room one more time. I see. Interesting. What's interesting? Okay. Just as I suspected, there's something very unusual about your room. Yeah, it's been cleaned. <laughs> unusual? What do you mean? So... I've searched your floor from corners to another. I didn't find a single strand of hair. Really? Indeed. Not one hair from the victim and not one hair from you, even though you've been he living here. You know, now that you mentioned it, I noticed something while I was looking around before. It looked like the lint roller in my room had been used, but I never touched it. Because someone have used it to... I see. Very interesting. Your room didn't have a single hair in it, and someone used a lint roller without your knowledge. In other words, someone other than you came in and scrubbed your floor room clean. The bathroom. On the other side of the door... I can't afford to freeze up right now. Forcing myself to push the panic down, I stepped into the bathroom. Looking at her made it painfully clear that this wasn't a dream or an illusion. She had lost everything that made her her. All at once I become overcome with dizziness, nausea, and the urge to burst into tears. But I can't. I can't hesitate now. Why? Why did she have to die? I have to uncover the truth. I have to find out what happened. I want to give up. I want to collapse, but that thought held me up and supported me. There's a button for a tab, right? Oh! There's letters! She wrote a thing! Look past Sakia on the wall behind her. And there I saw... Oh, hey, it's that number that you guys spoiled for me. 11037. It's Leon. Because it's Leon, but upside down because she's a stupid bitch. All right, now I just got to prove it. I didn't look at chat. Fuck you. I did No, I'm just smart. Fuck you. Did Sakia do this? To be fair, this is a lot tougher in Japanese. I'd be interested to see what the Japanese writing on the wall is. I would assume it's in Japanese, so it's written differently. I told myself I simply couldn't face what I saw, but 
No, there's no time to think like that. I pulled out the Monokuma file to verify what it said about her body. Some sort of sharp object must be thrust into her stomach. Whatever they used to kill her, where did they get it? It's definitely something I should look into later. Where will you get a kitchen knife? According to the Monokuma file, Siaka says her wrist was broken. Yeah, I don't really get how that happened. I would assume that was just an incidental thing that happened. Her wrist really does look swollen and bloody, that's for sure. But there's something sort of glittery on her wrist, too. I wonder if it's fucking gold. I wonder where the gold could have come from. Maybe it was from the gold sword. I don't fucking know. Well, hello, guys. I don't know what the fuck happened. She pissed on it. Guys, that's it. Piss is a disinfectant. She sprained her wrist, and then she pissed on it in order to keep it from... Becoming infected. Case closed. She's fine, guys. She's okay. Uh, another thing that concerns me is... There's some blood on her left index finger. But that's it. The palms of both of her hands are totally spotless. How come only her finger? Nice! The killer attacked Sakya in the main room, which is when her wrist got broken. And after that, the killer cornered her in the bathroom, where they inflicted the deadly blow. <laughs> <laughs> she broke her own wrist with the last ounce of her strength. She was like, I'm not going out like a bitch. I'm going to break every goddamn bone in my body. <laughs> so it looks like you found it, right, Matuko? The dead body? Yes. Yes, I did. The bloody numbers. It's not numbers. It's fucking name. Ups and down. I've never seen something written in blood before. It really was her final message. It's as if she wrote it with life itself. Right. Do you often talk about like an aspiring poet? But the numbers she wrote, what do they mean? 1037, I have no idea what that could mean. The way she wrote her numbers makes me think that she wanted to use her body to block them. If she wrote them in that location while she was sitting the way we found her, it means that she must have wrote them by turning her hand towards the wall. If you were write something in that position, do you know what the result would be? Upside what? down. Think about it. You're not going to tell me? Dakota. You're not to uncover the mystery of the case yourself. Otherwise, the case will end and you'll remain unconvinced. I have no idea what you're trying to say, but it's obvious you're not going to tell me. Nice! There's one other thing I wanted to ask you about. You remember how the door to your bathroom got broken? Broken? Oh, you mean how it gets stuck? What? It gets stuck? Yeah, I guess I'm... The only one, the door doesn't fit the frame right. When I first tried to use it, I thought it was just locked, but once you learn the trick, it opens no problem. Nice. But actually, I'm referring to the broken doorknob. The doorknob? That's right. You didn't notice? Well, just try closing the bathroom door. I'm sure you'll see right away what I'm talking about. The doorknob's practically about to fall off. Why is it like this? Someone must use a screwdriver or something similar to unscrew it. Why would someone want to do that? Guess they were trying to get the door unlocked, it, but ended up breaking the whole thing. But my bathroom door doesn't have a lock on it. Only girls' bathrooms can lock, right? So she stood there for a while, lost in thought. Then, apparently struck with a sudden realization, she shot a question at Just me. Just a second. I have one more question for you. You mentioned earlier that your bathroom door would get stuck, right? Did you tell anyone about that? Um... No. Well, I did tell Siaka about it last night when we switched rooms. So what you're saying is... Only you and Siaka knew mm -hmm. about that. That's interesting. She had the slightest hint of a smirk on her face. I get the sense that she, what she was really starting to get out of all this. And that clears it all up. Clears what up? I'm so lost. Goodbye. I'll see you later. As if forgetting I was even there, she suddenly turned and left the room. Nice! I should look at the DVD that she got. Well, she's dead. I have no choice but to see what's in it. See, I thought Leon was that guy. And I was like, you bitch. Also, why am I like... Two foot three. I fucking hate you! Actually, I don't. Seems like. Monokuma said that Siaka was killed in your room. Can't just stop thinking about it. Could it be the nameplate? This is Siaka's room, right? But the nameplate has my name on it. Wait, what? So all that effort I put into switching the rooms without anyone noticing was pointless. But why would anyone do that? I know it's not you, but I fucking hate you anyway. You don't go near any of the bodies, because you're a fucking creeper. You really think I'm guilty? Where is the trash room? That's a good point. I'm gonna go harass the trash room. Can I go in other people's rooms? Hey, you bastard. What do you think you're doing? I mean, seriously? How does my room have anything to do with the investigation? I suppose that's a natural reaction for someone going to your room without position. HUMS! <laughs> so, like, you can't get through that. 
It's the end of the line. The trash room. This is where all the trash in the school eventually winds up. How do you get this gate no, open? No, you can't go any further. Only the person on cleaning duty is allowed in. Cleaning no, duty? No, you can't go any further. Who's on no, cleaning no, duty? You can't go any further. No, no, you can't go any further. Cleaning duty has been added. Alright, so I guess we're gonna leave. I wonder who is on cleaning duty. Someone, get me a chores list. Or where does one get a knife? I'd assume the kitchen. Can I go into the back? Oh, look, there's a knife missing. I'm gonna take this. I don't think this is related to the case at all. Alright, let's see what's on this bitch. An image slowly appeared. It looked like some sort of concert. And standing on stage, front and center, was a face we all recognized too well. Siakir. Sisuku. Splaka. She was there, along with her friends that she had said had been so important to her. She was positively glowing right there in front of the crowd. So full of life. Seeing that image made it even harder to accept. Except that she was dead. My vision started to blur and darken, and then I passed out. And then that voice I began to despise so much began to float out of my Zono, the ultimate pop sensation, lead singer for a world famous all girl pop band. For these girls, the glowing spotlight only made them that much more beautiful. Suddenly the screen went dark. And then the next moment I saw something I could hardly believe. <gasps> what the Sakia had disappeared from the stage, which was now in ruins, but what I noticed even more than that was figures of all the girls who had simply collapsed. This ultra-successful team suddenly fell apart. None of them will ever perform on stage again for Sayaka. There's simply nowhere for her to return to. So here is the billion-dollar question. What, oh, what could have come... Without warning, the video cut off. What the hell? That wasn't real, right? They're a super famous pop group. Everyone knows who they are. Is he trying to say he was able to get even them? Did that really happen in front of everyone on the outside world? Must be going crazy. What kind of person would take things so far? Cleaning duty, huh? As a matter of fact, Monokuma gave, came to me and talked to me yesterday morning. Really? Listen to me. You probably realized I was basically in charge, so he decided to talk to me directly. The topic of conversation was assigned cleaning duty. So you're on cleaning duty now? That's wrong. Actually, no. Then I wonder who is. <laughs> hey, Fumi was right there when he had the conversation. He volunteered right away, so I let him have it. Indeed, but we'll swap out on a weekly basis, so I'm sure you'll be up before too long. Hey, you're on cleaning duty. Why'd you clean up the body? As a matter of fact, that's me. Why do you ask? Just so happens that Mo Makuma talked to me yesterday, Ed. About to ask me to take care of his words. Without someone on cleaning duty, the school would be flooded with trash in no time. <laughs> so I formally applied for the position so that we could smell all of the tissues that the girls leave behind. Hmm. I'm going to start this morning, but after what happened, I haven't got a chance to get started. But since you're on cleaning duty, you can open the gate to the front of the trash room. Of course! It's my job to gather out of all the garbage and toss it in the trash room. To do that, they gave me a key for the trash room mm -hmm. gate. But we're supposed to rotate once a week, so eventually you'll be in charge. Wait, hold on. You need a key to get into the trash room? And only the person on cleaning duty has access to the key? What's the point of going to all that trouble? Why not just leave the trash room open all the time so we can start things out whenever we want? That does seem so more convenient. Words, Actually, if anyone could go in and out of the trash room whenever they wanted, destroying evidence would be easy. The thrill would disappear, and things would become boring. Boring? Hey, listen. Hey, more important than that, let's stop thinking about how I might have murdered someone I didn't, guys. Haha, <laughs> I would never murder anyone. I've never murdered anyone. I'm not a murderer. Hey, fatty, why do you want a clean up cleaning duty gig anyway? I decided I want to volunteer for something I knew no one else would want to do. What's the big deal? You... Liar, why did you do it? Is it like... You want to dig through all the girls' trash looking for, you know, and poking around for it? No what are you talking about? My All my love is for 2D. 
you know? I actually believe him. There's a lot of kind of trash diggers like that. Maybe he'd get all tired of that 2D and then turn to... I would never get tired of 2D! After spending significantly more time comparing 2D and 3D, I voluntarily chose 2D. It's not because no one wants to get with me. The only thing 3D is good for is shower love and affection on 2D. It's the sh oh, it's the shower love. Uh, I thought he was like, I'm down with shower sex, which if I didn't already know it was Leon, I'd be like, wow, that's weird and suspicious. Don't have sex in the shower. It's really awkward. It doesn't work. Oh, and PVC pig figures. How are you totally not embarrassed to say stuff like that? If you're worried about the Sunni's question of morality, there's a very easy solution. Whenever a guy has cleaning duties, Sakura can accompany them from picking up the trash to dispose it. <laughs> If you're as innocent as you claim, where's the harm in it? It's not how it's supposed to- Anyway, there's another topic. Fume, since you were on cleaning duty, I have a favor to ask. You. He's joined my party. God, is he gonna get- I don't think anyone could murder him. He'd like me to open the gate, wouldn't you? Mr. Naegi. However, Miss Naegi. Sure you aren't planning on using the trash room to destroy evidence, are you? You fiend! You planned this all along! No, no. Just want to see if the actual killer had tried to destroy evidence or not. Mm. But the actual mm. killer is you, isn't mm. it? You want to see if you left anything behind. <laughs> Maybe a parallel world! Okay. Oh, hey, it's exactly what I was looking for. Something on the ground in front of the incinerator. It's a burnt piece of something. A burnt piece, like a hunk? Like a hunk of burning love? It's a sleeve from button. Yeah. It's all that's left of the evidence was a killer destroyed, but there are lots of people in here with white button up shirts. <sighs> Looks to be some kind of glass ball, just big enough to fit into the side palm of your hand. Do you know what it is? They say if you collect all seven, a dragon will appear and grant you a single wish. You are less than useful. Okay. Only one person it could be. It should be in the gym. I better go find out for sure. Shattered crystal ball was added to your... Good 30 feet from here. And it's on right now! Someone's turned on the incinerator! Perhaps it was the work of a fairy. Did you realize what you just said? A fairy? No, you just said the last time you were here, the incinerator was off. Yesterday, as soon as I was appointed, I came down to check the place out. It was definitely wasn't on then. I haven't been back in the trash room since then. And since I'm the only one who has the key to open the gate, it should be impossible for the incinerator to be on, and yet... Oh! Oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Leon threw his shirt, his clothing. That is... That was a risky-ass move. He threw the shirt into the incinerator, then he threw the glass ball to turn it on. And somehow, that worked. Mm -hmm. Ultimate baseball pitcher. Oh, yeah, that's... Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. It's not that risky. Oh, yeah, I guess I have to meet Shiro. Sorry, I forgot we had to look up the whole programmer lead thing. Hey, Shiro, I was hoping you could ask you something. Huh? What is it? Before she died, Siaki left a message. She wrote out the number Leon. Do you have any idea what those numbers might mean? Like, could they be a code or something? Mm. Sorry, no. She shook her head. Uh, sorry, sorry, I just don't know. Even she doesn't know. Or could she maybe know more than she's letting on? No, couldn't be. Can I ask you something? Uh, I gotta get out of here! Uh, uh, huh? What are you doing here? Does this look familiar? That's my crystal ball! That's all smashed! What the hell? The heck? I only bought it because the guy said it would be blessed. He said it was unbreakable. How did it break? What? It's actually made of glass, not crystal? Did that guy dupe me? He said it belongs to the pillars of history. King is Kong, George Washington, Napoleon. Said whoever controlled that crystal ball would control the world. Was that see how what did hold on. No, I've I've forgotten. I must have forgotten. I must have forgotten what his thing is. Cause surely it's not the, the ultimate clairvoyant, because that's what it says. And yet, how can you be dumb and clairvoyant? You know what's gonna happen. Okay, so imagine this, right? I'm gonna quiz you guys on something. Alright? And you guys, see if you can get the answer right. The answer is four. So the question is, what is two plus two? Is it three? It's three. It's five. Four twenty. Okay, there's a lot of... You guys were close. A couple of you guys were close. 
Some of you were very wrong. <laughs> one one zero three seven, you fuckers. <laughs> Let's all put that aside for now. So can you say without a doubt that this belonged to you? Um, yeah, it's mine for sure. Probably forgot it in the laundry room last night. Someone must have come by and snatched it. Weird, it's kind of strange the knife suddenly disappearing like that. So it wasn't missing from the beginning? Right. Nope. Let's remember it was all lined up nice in a neat row. So when did you notice one of them had disappeared? No. Well, I go to check some tea from there last night. All the knives were still there. When I finished my tea, I went back into the kitchen to wash my glass. And one of the knives was gone. So you're saying that the knife disappeared while you're drinking your tea in the dining hall? Yeah. In other words, you were right there in the dining hall when someone came in and took it. And you should be able to say for sure. You can tell everyone I didn't come into the dining hall last night, which proves that I didn't take it. Ba bow Hey, by the way, did you really kill Sayaka? Hina, do you really think I murdered her? I mean... She was killed in your room, right? So, I mean, you guys are supposed to be friends, right? But you still killed her. On the other hand, two people becoming good friends and then one of them killing the other is a classic drama setup. So when you consider everything together, yeah. honestly, I have no idea. Is it trial time? Um, so, uh... I'm getting tired of waiting. What say we just get started, hmm? It's time for the long away class trial! Now then, allow me to please go through the red door on the first- <laughs> Alright, time for the trial. We're doing this. I know the answer, guys! I got it! I got it before I looked at the evidence. Tell all your thoughts. Alright, so, here's what we know. Alright, here's what happened, guys. No, I know I said it was Leon, and the evidence- definitely proves that it's him the fact that someone was able to throw not only their clothing which is a white shirt which he wears prim primarily and also a glass ball with pinpoint accuracy in order to start an incinerator without going through a gate and also the fact that his name was written by the murder victim and also the fact that he is slightly taller and therefore the angle of entry for the knife is perfect for it. I know I said all that and I realize that that all makes sense, but I'm going to tell you guys something. I don't think that's what happened. I think what happened was that she had a fucking rager. She got real shit faced last night. She just wrecked the fucking room, right? While she was wrecking the room, someone came in to see if she was okay. And accidentally, she got stabbed by the sword. Now, when the sword stabbing happened, she was like, Shit! I gotta stop the bleeding. She put the knife in. Stop the bleeding, right? Then she tried to write out boobies on the wall, but she fucked up. Then she was like, I'm not going out like a bitch. So she broke all of her limbs. But, sadly, before she could finish her final genius work, she was only br able to break one limb. So that makes her like 25% not a bitch. I think I'm right, guys. Hey, everybody. You're like I bet you were afraid to be discovered as a murderer. You are. Listen to me. Listen to me. Ah! He, he, he strikes me as someone who would just be a, a, a barky dog. Then who is the killer? Fuck. I, I, I mean, I'm going to go with the. She had a. She just had. A fucking crazy ass bender. Who's the one who murdered Sakura? Is it really one of us? Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> is everyone here? Okay then. Please board the elevator in front of you, where all your fates will be decided. <laughs> I'll meet you all down there. I'll be waiting. Can I just... Oh. Well, then. Let's begin. You scared? No, scared isn't quite right. As I said before, it's up to you to uncover the mystery surrounding this case yourself. In Sakia's honor, I swear I'll find out who the real killer is. Why aren't you voice acting this? Well, I'm basically stupid and barely can read, so I figured let's not, let's not add, like, let's not try and spin plates while I'm just trying to ride a bike. You know what I mean? Was that a good example? Not really. I wonder if this is how a death row inmate feels when it's time's finally come. Oh. Rather than that, is it not more like a defendant waiting to receive his judgment? Oblivious to the shared anxiety, the elevator lowered us further into the bowels of the school. Yeah. 
You finally arrived! What do you think? Doesn't it feel just like a real courtroom? Not at all. It's like a Hollywood movie set, right? Dude, shit. Not even close, it's total shit! Well, now. well, okay, okay, everyone find your assigned seats and sit down. They... Everyone find your seats. So, I'm just gonna point out that, um, uh, no one's sitting. Now it's angle... Owie. Oh, yeah, of course they went with that angle. That's good. It's set up so everyone could see everyone else, which means that it'll also be easy for anyone to transfer their tension and unease into anyone else. There it seems to grow heavy as we sat there. S stood there. We stood there because we're standing. So the curtain opened on our first case opens. A judgment deadly. It's good. A deadly deception. A deadly betrayal. A deadly riddle, a deadly defense, a deadly faith. You can use other words. A deadly class trial. That was deadly. All right. All right, we're going with this. Let's begin with a basic explanation of the class trial. So, your votes will determine the results. If you can figure out who done it, then only they will receive punishment. But if you pick the wrong one, then I'll punish everyone besides the Blackened, and the one that deceived everyone else will graduate. Have I played any of the Phoenix Wrights games? I played the first one. And the killer really is one of us, right? Of course! Okay, then. Everyone, close your eyes. And whoever did it, raise your hand. Really, dude? Is that... <laughs> Did you just fuck around the whole time expecting that to work? Don't be a goddamn idiot. Why the hell would they raise their hand? Before we move on and start the trial, can I ask a question real quick? What's going on with those pictures? I'd feel awful if they got left out just because they died. Friendship penetrates even death's barrier. Okay, but... What about that other empty seat? There were only 15 of us to begin with, so why are there 16 seats? Oh, no reason! It's just that our little courtroom here can technically fit up to 16 people! That seems important. Okay! No, what no, 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 don't! Anyway! Panel? First up is the case summary! Now! Let the class try. Yeah, what begin. is that accent? Is it anything I found? Anything I noticed? It, I have to be ready to speak up about everything because this isn't just about me. Everyone's lives are on the line. The first non-stop debate is about to begin. Would you like to hear more? Yes. European. It's French. It's supposed to be French. As things progress during each class trial, you will engage in a number of non-stop debates. During these discussions, characters will speak one after another without pause. It is up to you to unearth any lies or contradictions buried within the statements. I hate this. Which means that you ought to use your truth bullets to refute what they say. Any relevant truth bullets you found during the investigation will be loaded into the truth cylinder. <laughs> this is so dumb. Use the mouse to aim and then fire at the left mouse button. Pay close attention to the character statements and use the truth bullets to blast the right ones. Note that you... If you run out of time, you will automatically fail, so please be careful. If you press the escape key during these arguments, you can review the controls. Good luck. I thought I... You can only shoot gold words. You... What? Wait, what? You have to hit the words? Do you happen to notice? It represents a potential hole in the person's statement. I thought I had to shoot them. What do I have to shoot? I shoot the words? Killer must have taken her by surprise while she was in the bathroom. That's not true. She didn't even have a chance to resist. No, it's wrong. Objection! Just a second, Chihiro. Try to remember how my room looked. My room. Me. My room. It got fucked up. I'm gonna have to sleep in there tonight. With the way things had been damaged, I think we can definitely assume there was a struggle. Oh, so I don't even have to pick out the evidence. Between who and who? Between Sayaka and the killer, of course. So you're saying Sayaka wasn't caught by surprise in the bathroom? No. She must have been attacked in the main room first. Then 
She ran to the bathroom to try and hide. The killer followed her in, and that's where they finished the job. That much should have been obvious after taking one look at the scene. It shouldn't even need explaining. Sayaka. Sorry. Yeah. You're being dumb. Okay, so what's next? Next is the subject of the murder weapon. We need to determine what was used to kill Sayaka. It was the knife. What was the weapon, guys? I don't know. Oh, fuck, I'm gonna lose. So what was used to kill her? The knife. There was some kind of sharp object thrust into her stomach. The knife! Now, that is the murder weapon. Yes. So the killer used some random knife. Nope. No, that's wrong. It was, it was the knife. Oh my god. No, I do think it was a knife, but not just any knife. I'm almost positive it was a kitchen knife. Did they do the dialogue before they saw what the art was going to be? Huh? A kitchen knife? After the murder, we discovered that one of the knives from the kitchen was missing. Which means that knife must be the murder weapon. That voice. Oh, yeah. I guess that makes sense. You could sort of see the weapon sticking out of her stomach. Yes. And if you look real close, I could totally see that being a kitchen knife. You don't even really have to look that close. Okay, We've done it, guys. We solved it. Knife. But where does that get us? I mean, we all know Makoto killed her, right? No. That's right. Makoto's room was the scene of the crime. I can't shoot that one. Hold on a second. Let's draw our conclusions after we've presented our arguments. Well, we can talk all we want. It's not going to change. I don't think that's true at all. I'm sure if we keep at it, something new will... Do you really believe that? She's right. There's going to be a breakthrough somewhere just waiting for us to find it. So I guess there's no question that the kitchen knife was the murder weapon. Yes. But where does that get us? Makoto mm, must have taken it from the kitchen, right? He did it in secret. Would nobody... No, it's wrong. Someone saw me take it. Okay, wait. Hold on. I didn't take the knife from the kitchen. Next, you're gonna say you're not the killer, right? Well, what if I have a witness? What do you think, Hina? Huh? Remember what you were telling me earlier? I went to go and get some tea from the kitchen, or get some tea from the kitchen last night, and all the knives were still there. But when I finished my tea and went back into the kitchen to wash my glass, one of the knives was gone. So you're saying that the knife disappeared while you were drinking the tea in the dining hall? Yeah. Just to be perfectly clear, the knife disappeared while you were in the dining hall. Correct? God, that would suck if she had forgotten. Yeah, that's right. And at any point while you were there, did you ever see me come into the dining hall? More importantly, who did you see go into the dining hall? Um, no, I don't think so. You don't think so? No, he definitely wasn't there. The knife disappeared while Hino was in the dining hall. But I wasn't there the entire time. In other words, there's no way I could have taken the knife. I like the jittering thing on the side there. It's pretty good. Okay, then what about this? What if the idiot swimmer girl and Makoto are in on it together and lying to protect each other? Idiot swimmer girl? Oh, and more importantly, why would I get involved in something like that? Speaking of which, I'd like to ask the bear. If there is an accomplice, do they also become blackened? So you ask, and so I shall answer. Each murder is allowed to have an accomplice, but only the one who does the killing will get to graduate. So in other words, two people can work together, but one of them has no chance of profiting from it. Then there's no way anyone would work together, right? Well, you guys didn't know that, so entirely possible. But what if they did work together and they just didn't know about the rule? Exactly. Uh, good grief. Enough already. No, okay? There are no accomplices in this case. Oops. Did I say that out loud? Anyway, I didn't go to the dining hall. And I Rev didn't take the Rev is Shihiro. Night. She's like two feet smaller than me. And also good with computers. There's a lot of things that make us dissimilar. So I'm not the killer. Okay, so then, who did take the knife? Hina seemed the obvious candidate. After all, she just said she was in the dining hall. Well, who else was in it? No, no way! I swear it wasn't me! Sure, 
But can you or anyone else prove that? I can. Okay. That's right. Sakura was with me the entire time I was drinking my tea. Wait, what? What the fuck? What? Uh, I hate to have to ask, but just to be sure, Sakura's me. Right. But then, couldn't either one of them have grabbed the knife? Actually, no. Because, um, well... Just spit it out already. I stayed in Hina's room last night. Oh, okay. I got so scared thanks to those creepy videos. I wasn't really thinking, I just asked her to stay over. Which means, we have airtight alibis. I mean, yeah, since we know there are no accomplices. You stayed over? Doesn't that violate one of the school regulations? Clearly not. We're not allowed to sleep anywhere but the dorms. But it doesn't say we have to stay in our assigned room. So, I don't think that's a problem. It is a problem! A boy and a girl spending the night together? Wow. It's unwholesome. Okay, so first off, fuck you. Second off, I mean, on the plus side, on the plus side, he's all right with dudes wearing dresses. But I'm a girl. You are? Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. But if it wasn't either of you, then what other possibility is there? Actually, there is one other possibility. Right, Hina? Oh yeah, that's true. One other person did come to the dining hall while we were there. Why didn't you say so in the first place? Yeah, that's very important. Well, because they're not here anymore. Sayaka. She's the one who came to the dining hall. And then later, she wound up dead. Oh, she switched the plates. Oh, oh, that bitch. She tried to kill me, I think. Saika. Okay, so the person who took the knife from the kitchen was uh, Saika. Then. I got it. Then, Saika is the one who took the knife. That's the only possibility. Okay, so that doesn't narrow down the murderers. And thinking back on it, she was acting kind of unusual. When she came into the dining hall, she didn't even look at us. She just went straight to the kitchen. As she Wait a minute, I was right! She did try to kill me! I thought I did the thing earlier! Oh my god, the first episode of this, I called out the thing. What the bitch? I was right about that to begin with! I was right about, like, 60% of this! Like, not enough to get a passing grade if this was a test, but almost, almost right. I have approximate knowledge of some thing. The person who took the knife was the victim herself. I'm sure... I'm sure she just took it for self-defense. So you're saying the knife she took was then taken from her and she was killed with it? In that case, you may not have taken the knife, but you still could have killed her. What? See? He did do it after all. No, you're wrong. So, that's how you would twist the argument and send us all off in the wrong direction? Mm hmm. You possess a most terrifying talent. I mean, Leon still did it. Damn, if I don't do something, they're gonna blame me for the murder. Don't they understand? If I- if they could convict me, everyone's gonna die. Leon, it's still too early to decide conclusively that Makoto is the killer. Not America. No 860 is, so it's more like a 50%. Because you see... If the room did belong to the killer, then they did something most bewildering. Yeah. And until we unravel that little mystery, you simply can't declare that he's the killer. Bewildering? What the hell are you talking about? Something was missing from the scene of the crime that by all rights should have been there. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? Your first hangman's gambit is about to begin. Would you like to hear more? It sounds important, so yes. As things advance further in class trial, the hangman's gambit will eventually take place. At this point, I'm going to uh, reveal an important phrase related to the incident in question. You also deduce the phrase uh, in the letters flying around and the letters already know. It's literally hangman. Okay. Complete the phrase by shooting down the flying errors in letters in the right order. I have to know how to spell? Everyone hates this. Oh, we can just figure out what that something is. You could just tell us rather than being like a, a mysterious bitch. Okay. I know she stabbed him with a knife. But can you spell the word knife? 
Yes. In this fun game? I guess. I need the letter K. Make sure you pick the right letters. I need the letter K. And if different letters touch, they explode. There is no K you over there. You need to make a comic book after this. Now I understand. I thought I had to shoot it once, right. but we have to shoot it multiple times. There wasn't times. a single hair on the floor. So, the culprit removed some evidence? All evidence. Yes. And if I were the culprit, why would I need to get rid of all the hair in my own room? It wouldn't be unusual at all to find my hair at the crime scene if the crime scene is in my room. The reason all the hair was gone was to remove any trace that Sayaka had ever been there. That makes sense, does it not? Yeah, but she was found in the bathroom. No. If that were the case, they would have had to do something about the body itself, not just her hair. Ha ha ha! Yes, very true, very true! Okay, then why wasn't He's one of those guys that the... thinks he's smart and just uses the word logic and just assumes that he's smart without having any evidence to prove that? Aside from the fact that, like, he wants to be. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's a certain kind of nerd who believes he's smart for no reason. The killer got rid of it all, of course. He removed any trace that they had ever been there. Wait, then that means... Precisely. It's simply beyond reason to believe that the room's owner and the killer are one and the same. Thank you. Then, Makoto isn't the culprit? Are you sure we can decide something so important based solely on the absence of some hair? Why the fuck would I do that? No. There are other reasons that prove why Makoto couldn't have done it. Are you the ultimate detective? I would like to hear these reasons. Do you remember anything remarkable about the bathroom at the scene? Oh! So was attacked in the main room first. Oh. Then yeah, then they ran after her, got into the bathroom, and stabbed her. And how did the killer get into the bathroom? Did they have any trouble with it? What do you mean? It's fairly certain that the killer had some trouble getting into the bathroom. There was clear evidence left behind. Do you remember, Makoto? Did anyone else actually investigate the room, or was it just, like, the four of us? Alright. Yes. Present. Gun! Evidence that the killer had trouble getting into the bathroom. You're talking about the doorknob, right? Huh? The doorknob? What doorknob? The doorknob for my bathroom. It was completely- The glass broken. ball? See how the top part was unscrewed? And the doorknob's about ready to fall off? Oh, yeah, true. But what does it mean? In trying to bypass the lock, they ended up nearly removing the entire doorknob. This is another most bewildering act for the room's owner. It proves Makoto is beyond suspicion. So what? You're saying he wouldn't break the door in his own room? But if the only choice you have is to break it, you break it. There's nothing bewildering about it. You still don't see? Okay, then. Let's take another look at how the incident unfolded. Hopefully that will help you understand. How many times is this face used for, like, let's say some guy who's very confident in their smarts and their logic on the internet using smug anime girls? Kyoko said it was a bewildering act. Almost didn't notice it at first. Is that the key point here? The incident took place in Makoto's room. No, it didn't! Sayaka was first attacked in the main room. Yeah, that's right. She then fled into the bathroom. Right. Then the killer ran after her. Right. And they got into the bathroom. Yeah. At that point, the killer had to try and bust down the door. That's... Because Sayaka had locked it. No, that's wrong. Yeah, there it is. The reason my bathroom didn't open wasn't because it was locked. After all, the girls' rooms are the only ones with locking bathrooms, right? Yes, now that you mention it, that is true. Then why didn't your bathroom door open? Because it was stuck. Huh? What are you talking about? My bathroom door doesn't fit in the frame quite right. Monokuma over there can testify to that. Yep, true as true can be. But you know... You're supposed to be the ultimate lucky student, right? But to have such a cruddy door... Door stuck! This door stuck! Please! <laughs> that's not lucky at all! So the reason the door didn't open... Yeah, no one questioned that that's the reason I'm here? I guess it's not the time, right? But the killer didn't know that and assumed it was locked. So they tore apart the doorknob to get in. 
Genuine dick sucker! Okay, but then why would the killer even think the door was locked in the first place? Everyone should have known you can't lock any of the boys' bathrooms. Yeah, it's weird that the one guy in here... The killer could easily make that mistake, thanks to one important detail about the scene of the crime. Oh yeah, that's true. Oh, okay, we need to point that out. So they didn't know that the door actually couldn't be locked. In other words, the important detail about the crime scene was it took place in my room. That's how I say that, right? not have realized that it was my room. What? Are you saying the culprit didn't even know where he was? That's inconceivable. No, it, it actually is very conceivable. And yet, he's absolutely right. Say what? Well, to Does he ever stop specific, doing that? What the killer didn't know was that Makoto and Sayaka had switched rooms, which is what led to the misunderstanding about the bathroom. If Sayaka had been in her own room, then... Then there would have been a lock on the door, and they would have had to break through! So they had no idea how unnecessary their actions were. Ultimately, we can't know if it came open by force or simply by accident. But the killer must have been considerably confused, with no idea how they actually got the door open. Regardless, it was a pointless act. Wasting time trying to break down a door that wasn't locked is... Definitely something I wouldn't do, since I would have known exactly why it wasn't opening, right? That is a definite possibility. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Give me five bucks. So the killer would have to be someone who didn't know they'd switched rooms? Then Makoto couldn't have done it. That's what I've been trying to tell okay. you. Then who did do it? I'm sorry, but I give up! Quit without saving! But... what happens if we can't decide on who we think did it? Well, why don't we just vote right now? Majority rules! Okay, you're really dumb. Majority rules? Do you really think that's a good idea? Yeah, our necks are on the line here. Someone seriously needs to do something. Real life video game! Does no one have any other thoughts or questions? It does not matter how trivial I have plenty. Seem. I have a full fucking magazine of truth bullets to unload into this room right now. Oh, as a matter of fact, I do have one question. Oh, you. You don't gotta sound so disappointed. It's fine, it's fine. Just ask your question. Well, I was just wondering, how did the culprit get into Makoto's room in the first place? Hmm, yes. How did the killer get inside? Yeah, this is the one bit that I didn't really figure out. Maybe Sayaka just dropped the key somewhere and the culprit picked it up. That's possible, right? I don't think so. That seems way too convenient. Then this is a blind run, yes. Maybe someone picked the lock? It's unpickable. Negative! If you remember, Monokuma made it quite clear that the locks are all unpickable. Fine. How about this? The killer got in the easy way. They could have knocked and said they wanted to talk or something, and Ms. Maizono just let him in. No, that can't be it either. Because my evidence that you guys still don't trust- Okay, they actually trust me now, so maybe. Uh -huh. I figured it out before I walked into the room. Me? Sounds like someone doesn't know his place. I exactly hate this man. And anyone like him. Exactly, can't that be it? Oh, that. I had to yeah. scroll down to read the thing. Because Sayaka was already scared, remember? That's why she asked me to switch rooms in the first place. Same goes for you, Sayaka. No matter who it is, don't open your door for anyone. Even if I'm sure it's you, I absolutely won't open it. Otherwise, what's the point of even switching? Knowing what she'd been through, I just can't believe she would have opened the door for anyone. What if her being scared was a lie? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Huh? Well, what the hell is that supposed to mean? Why would she lie about something like that? I know you don't want to consider it, but look at this and tell me. There's something I want to talk to you about. Uh, just us two in five minutes come see me in my room. Check the nameplates and make sure you don't get the room wrong, okay? I found a notepad during my search, and I shaded in the top sheet with a pencil. And these are the words that appear. Oh man! I've totally seen people do that on detective shows. When you write, it can leave an imprint. 
sketch over the next sheet of paper, and you can see the words. When I saw that, I was like, holy crap. I better make sure I rip the paper out before I use it from now on. It's a pretty old-fashioned technique. But even the classics can be surprisingly useful. Wow, sometimes. yeah, that's fairly important evidence. Oh, and I should also mention, I found the notepad on the desk in Makoto's room. Huh? Which means only someone who had been in Makoto's room before the incident could have written it. Okay. And either it was Makoto who lived there, or Sayaka who switched rooms for a single night. So, Makoto, did you write this? Can we just get a sample of my writing? No, I didn't. Of course you didn't. Because the note also bears a perfectly legible signature. Sayaka's signature. I, mean, I could have written that, to be fair. <laughs> Weird flex to be like, yep, that was me. Sayaka wrote it. But, but why? why? Oh. Why would she write that? The note was likely her way of getting in touch with a certain someone. She must have slid it under their door to let them she know wanted to she fuck someone in my bed. Why? You got an invitation Aren't writing like samples fakeable? Very. Pop sensation. What young man could resist? Of course, I'm only into 2D, so it wouldn't have any effect on me. Everyone here is a two-dimensional anime person. But can we be sure anyone even got this note? Notice how she's not a three-dimensional object? She counts. Because video game. And honestly, even if they did, I do not think they are at all involved in what happened. Huh? What makes you say that? <laughs> Would you like to hear what I have to say? That's, that's what she asked. Very well then. Pay attention. Sayaka and Makoto switched rooms, correct? Yes. But in the note, the place they were asked to come to, it specifically says, my room. No, it doesn't. I see. So if someone read that note, then they would have gone to Sayaka's room. No. Exactly. The room that Makoto was staying in. No, that's wrong. Yeah. That's that seemed flipped. The nameplates on my and Sayaka's rooms got switched. They got switched? That's right. The nameplates got switched, just like the rooms themselves. As a result, the nameplate on Sayaka's room actually had Makoto's name. Okay, name good. I'm glad I'm not Makoto's dumb. Room had Sayaka's. I'm I'm wrong. What you're saying is the room Sayaka was staying in was actually marked as her room. Then, if someone did do what the note said, they would end up at Makoto's room where Sayaka was. Plus, their rooms are right next to each other, so switching the nameplates would be no problem. And the one who switched the names was... Well, of course it wasn't you, right, Makoto? That's true. Right. Okay, then who did it? There's only one person who could have switched the nameplates. The only one person who knew to switch rooms was... I got it! Sayaka, for Me some and reason. Sayaka were the only ones who ever knew about us switching rooms. So the only other person besides me who would even notice. You can also infer as much from her note. There's something I want to talk to you about. Uh, just us two in five minutes. Come see me in my room. Check the name plates to make sure you don't get the wrong room, okay? She specifically tells the reader to check the name plate. Right. She would only have written that if when she When I start pronouncing her name right? Because switched. they keep saying it, so I can't get it wrong. But why would she switch them in the first place? She wanted someone to come to the room she was in, and also hide the fact that it was Makoto's room. What? Inviting someone to your room, but not telling them you'd switch rooms. Why would anyone- To understand that, we first need to understand what happened after she invited the person into the room. That's where the answer lies. What happened then was, whoever she invited over, came in and attacked her! We figured it out! We know who did it! Whoever she invited over is the culprit! But we still don't know who it is, you goddamn idiot! Sayaka fought with her killer there in the room, yes? Perhaps the answer to our previous question lies in that initial struggle. Yes, I think you're right. Then... We just have to figure out what happened during the fight, right? That reminds me. There was a replica sword at the murder scene. Was that perhaps used during the fight? Yes. Oh yeah. What's the deal with that sword? 
Sayaka suggested I should hold on to it. I thought it might come in handy if I had to defend myself. It seems pretty likely that the killer used it to break Sayaka's right wrist. Oh, yeah, I knew that. Right, that's why. How the hell could you possibly know that's what broke her wrist? Glittery. Yeah, there you go. I got it! All you have to do is take a good look at her broken wrist, and it should become pretty clear. Right there where her wrist is all swollen. There's something glittery there. Is, is that gold? It sure is. Specifically, the gold coating from the replica sword. You barely have to touch that stuff, and it'll stick right to you. And there's some on her wrist because... I got her! Because she got hit with the sword right there on her wrist! Okay. I see, I see. And so the truth draws ever closer. All right. Then it's about time to No, we this still mystery. don't have everything together. Replica sword sheath. Kitchen knife set. Replica sword. Oh, that's going to be bullshit. When the fighting broke out, the culprit grabbed the sword. Right. That's when the first blow was dealt. A sword based sneak attack. I guess? Yeah, no. She tried to sneak attack them in order to... She wanted to kill someone in my room? No. I don't think the fight started with the sword. Yeah, she tried to jump someone and then pin it on me. Oh, she's such a bitch! Because the sword sheath had been I'm glad she's dead. Fuck her. See? There's a gash in it. Like someone cut into it with something sharp. Something sharp? You I forgot that the the, there was knife? a knife scratch on it. the only sharp thing found at the scene. Stop jumping ahead. Slow down and explain it so I get what the hell's going on. If the sword was used first, there wouldn't be any... She wasn't the one using the, the sword. She the was sheet. the one using the knife, which means that whoever walked into the room, Leon, is the one that blocks the sword. So he was defending himself from a sneak attack because she's a bitch! If you were going to attack with the sword, you'd take it out of the sheath first, right? That's true. With the sheath on, it'd be heavy and bulky and useless as shit. Okay, so how did the sheath get damaged? If they got attacked with the kitchen knife, maybe they grabbed the sword as a defensive impulse. In that situation, there wouldn't be any time to actually- So you're saying the sword was initially used to defend against an attack from the knife? Which means whoever had the kitchen knife was the one who attacked first. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. We we need to explain that? I think I get it. So here's how it all played out. The culprit came in, found the kitchen knife hidden there somewhere. Then they took the knife and attacked Sayaka before no. she grabbed the sword to defend herself. No. But then the culprit took that from her too. Then, after they broke her wrist with the sword, they took the knife and finished it. Sorry, but I don't think Sayaka used the sword to defend Yeah, unfortunately. What? How the hell can you not think that? Because she never held the sword at all. There's a certain part of her body that makes this clear. <laughs> her feet? Is it her hand? It's, it's her hands. If you wanted to use the sword, which part of you? What? I got it. You're talking about her palms, right? You're talking about her tits, right? And the entire room goes quiet for a minute. It's just like, no. The palms of her hands were perfectly clean, so I don't think she ever picked up the sword. How can you know that just by looking at her palms? Like I said before, you can stop pointing. You don't know what the fuck's going right on. Off. All you have to do is touch it. In fact, if you look, you'll notice that a lot of the gold has already come off the handle. It's safe to assume. That's because whoever used the sword got some of it on their hands. There's really no way she could have picked it up and come away completely clean. Maybe she washed her hands after she escaped into the bathroom. Sorry, but I don't think so. Why do you say that? Is it because you think I'm ugly? You have issues. Oh, that's not it at all. There's certainly a regulation that talks... Um... Uh, the water is off. I got it. According to the Monokuma file, 
Sayaka's time of death was around 1.30 a.m. In other words, at nighttime. And the water in the bathroom shuts off at nighttime. Oh, I didn't know that. Actually, I haven't taken a shower yet. Please, could you be any more obvious? The sight of you repulses me. But I can smell you from here. Take a shower. Gross. Oh, my. Don't make me repeat myself. Just do as I tell you. Your stench is an insult. Grosser. You're no different. You smell like a big, fat, ugly donkey. Hmm? I'm not sure whether to take that as an insult or a compliment. An insult, obviously. Why would you think that was a compliment? So anyway, if someone yeah, can never touch let's the sword, not deal with that. The killer is the only one who used the sword. But yes. Hold on. If that's right, then the one who damaged the sheep with the kitchen knife was. Don't say donkey dick, of course. That's wrong. The one who damaged the sheath would have to have been the one without the sword. Sayaka? She had the kitchen knife? We already addressed this shit. We knew this. But we already said that the attack started with... Nope. The person with the knife attacked first, and the sword was used as an impromptu defense. And the one who attacked first was... Sayaka? Now do you understand? She wasn't a blameless victim in this. Yeah, she was a fucking bitch! No, far from it. It's almost as if she'd been planning to commit a murder of her own. She took the knife from the kitchen, then invited the culprit to the room she was staying in. This sucks for Leon. And if it's true that she had the kitchen knife... Because he defended himself. Indeed. These are all the actions of an assailant. Which brings up another point. Nakuto, Sayaka was the one who suggested you two switch rooms, correct? Yes. Maybe the reason she wanted to switch rooms was so that she could pin the crime yep. on you. Yep, we were there about but ten minutes ago. Sayaka wanted to... on me? That would also explain why she would switch the nameplates. She wanted to get whoever she had targeted to come to Nakuto's room where she was staying. Leon! She wanted to on me. And by committing the murder there, instead of her room, that would implicate Nakuto. But for that to work, the target had to be lured out while still keeping the room swap a secret. If the target knew she had switched rooms, they would have become suspicious right away. So all that's why she switched the names? Yeah. But doesn't that plan seem a little risky? For one thing, even if her plan worked, Mr. Naegi would just tell everyone they'd switched rooms. I don't know. I'm not sure our soft-hearted Makoto is capable of that kind of cutthroat behavior. I'm sure Sayaka realized the same thing, which is why out of all of us, she asked him to switch rooms. We got used! She was the ultimate pop sensation. What the fuck? Does that have to do with anything? A totally forgettable kid. Or a national superstar. Who are you more likely to believe? Wait, then you're saying she had this all planned out? Yeah. Holy shit! But in the end, her plan backfired. She launched her attack with the knife, then found herself under attack in turn. That must be when her wrist got broken. And she was forced to drop the knife. The tables were suddenly turned on her, and she died at the hands of the one she'd planned to murder. Just hold on! That can't be true! Because, hey, hey! You guys have totally derailed the argument! You're being yeah, so you are all were saying right that. Now. Come on, hurry up and decide who did it! Wouldn't it be awful if I had to punish you all just because you ran out of time? Is that a thing you could do? Oh, yeah, we gotta decide who we think did it. Well, I'm off the hook. Makoto, right now you just need to concentrate on figuring out the Why is it my job? History. If we can't uncover who murdered Sayaka, it's over for all of us. Why is it my job? I know I'm the main character, but why is it my job? Why are you telling me specifically this? Is it really all over? Obviously, I'm committed to finding out who killed her, but what else can I do? I mean, as far as clues go, there's nothing left. No, there are things left. 
Dying message is the only truth bullet. It's easy just to say, hey, decide who did it. But there just aren't any more clues, right? No, it's wrong. Yeah, and you are a, less of a bastard than I thought. There still might be one clue left. Sayaka's dying message. Dying? Wait, wh what did you say? What? The dying message. She wrote something on the wall behind her. Remember? One, one, zero, three, seven. Written in her own blood. There must be a clue. Well, before we get too far into that, I need to ask, can we really be sure that Sayaka Oh my god, yes. It's no question. Ugh. I got it! Her left <sighs> index finger had blood on it. That could only be because she used that finger to write the message. I see. She broke her right wrist during the fight, so she'd have to use her left hand to write. Sure. I think we can all agree Sayaka wrote it. But still, what the heck do those numbers mean? Hey, Chihiro. You're a computer nerd or whatever, right? You should know all about numbers and shit. No, that's not... Yes, I'm a programmer, but I don't see any kind of meaning in these numbers. Of course. It's because they're not numbers. No, they're not. Oh, yeah, it looks like... What? 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 Hey, no, it's just... Uh, look at the numbers, assuming they're not numbers. Don't these first two, one, one? Ah, oh, you're right. Yes, That's I knew it was Leon. I knew it was Leon so I assumed literally the second one, I saw it. Looking at it now, you could also read it as an N. Whoa. You might have finally just said something worth a shit. And yet, you're still here not doing that. <laughs> Our little gray cells are really getting excited now. But even if that really is an N, N037, doesn't make any more sense than before. It's Noelle! Noelle did it! Damn it, there's no use. I just don't know. Guys... Maybe she got murdered, but her last act on Earth was to try and remind us that despite everything, despite being locked in this horrible school, remember Christmas, the season of giving. Right? Did I get it? Rotate the image 180 degrees. Rotate it? I think I may be seeing oh something. My God. Now I see. She wrote down the killer's name. Oh my god, it's Leon. Oh no. Pass the clue card and write on to who did it. So, whose name did she write? If he's turned the message 180 degrees, should become crystal clear. Select someone. It's me. Wow, it's Leon. Here's my answer. The key to solving this mystery was simply to rotate the writing. Don't act like you degrees. fucking figured out. She just said that. If you turn the message around, it becomes the letters L E O N. L E O N. Or more accurately, Leon. What the hell are you talking about? It's just a coincidence. It's just a bunch of random squiggles that happen to look like my name. Yeah, okay. No, it's not random at all. She wrote that message on the wall behind her as she was leaning up against it. In that position, she couldn't move to write normally and had to write upside down, as it were. When you look at it standing in front of her, it ends up... I want to learn Japanese just to learn how they fuck this up. Try it for yourself if you want. Write something sitting like her and the letters will be inverted. That sounds like one hell of a stretch to me. It's not. I'm the killer? You can't just go and say shit like that. If you're not the killer, then why did you try to destroy the evidence? Huh? You know what I'm talking about, right, Makoto? The evidence Leon tried to get rid of? The thing I found in front of the... Yep, yeah, okay. Psychus wrist! What Was it the incinerator? You mean the burnt shirt piece I found laying on the ground by the incinerator, right? As the killer stabbed Sayaka, they must have gotten some of her blood on them. And to dispose of the shirt covered in the victim's blood, they threw it into the incinerator. But one piece burned off and got left behind. And the killer didn't notice. 
If they had, they most certainly would have panicked. Isn't that right, Leon? But is one scrap of fabric enough to conclude that Leon is guilty? Yes. Yeah, I mean, Leon's not the only one wearing a white button-up. That, that's right. There are plenty of other people here with shirts like mine. With just that one little charred piece, there's no way you can say for sure who it belongs to. You're right. That alone isn't enough. But there are some other points that may reveal the truth. Are you finally starting to understand? The answers to all the riddles are right here. There's something else about it that we need to pay attention to. Uh, how it was disposed of, I guess. It's technically all of those things. was disposed of. We should be able to figure out who the killer is. Oh, oh yeah, that's a good point. I, I think I know what you're gonna say. You can't reach the incinerator without opening the gate in front of the trash room, right? Yep. And obviously, you wouldn't be able to hit the switch to turn it on either. Right. You'd need the key to get in. And the one with the key was the person on cleaning duty. So the killer had to be whoever was in charge of taking care of the trash, right? No. <laughs> Interesting. There's another way to use the incinerator without being the one on the cleaning duty. That's exactly proves that Leon is the real killer. It, on the harder difficulties, well, it has the other ones. Whoever was on cleaning duty. I've missed it so many times that I'm just. Person in charge of the trash. And no. you'd have to get close to No, the there it is. No, that's wrong. Hold on. I think I know how someone could dispose of the evidence without using the trash room key. But if you can't get past the gate, you couldn't possibly turn on the incinerator, could you? Yes, you could. If you used this. What is it? Some kind of glass ball? It's busted to hell. Yeah, it's almost as if someone threw it against something. Actually, it was supposed to be a crystal ball, but... Uh... But how would you use it? Well, you can tell the future with it. I got it! The killer simply took aim at the incinerator switch and threw the ball through a gap in the gate. That's pretty impressive, actually. All they had can we just real quick talk about how he threw that through? Would come to life. Like, through the grating. You saw how tight that grate was. And he hit it. Like, that would have sucked had he missed. He would have had to find some other random shit to throw. Through that, through a gap in the gate? Yeah, it's pretty good. Remember what you said before, Hifumi? It's very strange. I'm quite certain that the last time I was down here, perhaps it was the work of a fairy. I mean, I know he's the ultimate baseball pro, but I'm just saying that is pretty impressive. World's going to miss a, a champion here. Was because the killer was able to hit the switch without opening the gate. I'm going to bet there's a cutscene for his death. I will describe it. I'm going to bet that it's going to be copyright claims. Once they got the incinerator going, all they had to do was ball up the shirt and toss it in. Hey, come on. What the hell is this? All you have to do is look at the scene to know that the killer never actually went inside the It's not claimed. It might be. The shards of broken glass, the incinerator left running, the piece of shirt that escaped the fire. Wait, wait, no, just hold on. But the distance from the gate to the incinerator has to be at least 30 feet, right? It's different, the okay. accuracy you'd need to throw a glass ball that far and hit something that small. Could someone really do that? that that's right, there's no way. It'd be impossible. Difficult, absolutely. Impossible? I don't think so, because the killer is the ultimate baseball star. Isn't that right, Leon? Do you, do you have any idea how stupid you sound right now? A target 30 feet away would surely be little challenge for the ultimate baseball star. The fanfic creator. You, you can't be serious. I mean, if you just walked through, it'd be pretty easy. I'm not the killer. These goddamn shipper brains have got it all wrong, I'm telling you. You still won't admit it? Okay, then. Makoto. Go ahead and review the incident one more time to make his crime perfectly clear. Why is it my job? You already know. You just do it. And with that, we can end this. Listen to me! What the hell do you mean, end this? We mean kill you. Say what you want, Leon. But all the questions have been answered. And the truth has been revealed. Now here's what happened. In this phase, you must complete a summary of the case. 
You'll have to reproduce the flow of events in the form of a comic book. <laughs> However, you'll notice that in the comic there's a number of pieces missing. It's up to you to complete the comic by using the truth panels. Truth bullets! Truth panels! I can make an entire truth firing range with that shit. <laughs> Okay, I got it. Here's exactly what happened. I think I'd better take one more look back at the case from the beginning. There are fake panels. Last night, the killer went to the Okay, I got it wrong apparently. From what we can tell, Sayaka invited that person there intending to kill them. She attacked them with the knife she'd taken from the kitchen earlier. Okay, that's so but far so good. Happened that she wasn't prepared for. They grabbed the fake sword I put in my room and fought back. During the struggle, a strike from the sword. But thank you for the raid, Mike. Right we'll get back to Minecraft or something next week. That's one hell of a raid. And that's when she lost her grip on the kitchen knife. See, it could have been the picture of her dropping it that was relevant there. Finding herself cornered, Sayaka panicked and ran into the bathroom. That's wrong, isn't it? The killer went after her, but couldn't get the bathroom door open. What they didn't know was that my bathroom door got stuck easily, and there was a trick to opening it. Sayaka knew it was already shown. Okay, fair enough. But so instead, the killer forced the door open, took the kitchen knife. And stab Sayaka. But with what strength she had remaining, Sayaka left a dying message. To keep the killer from noticing, she wrote it on the wall behind her. And with that, all her strength was gone. With Sayaka dead, the killer quickly began destroying the evidence. First, they took off their shirt, which was covered in their victim's blood. Then they took the lint roller in my room and cleaned up the entire area. This, this part actually seems really excessive. They wanted to make sure they got rid of any trace that had ever been there. Afterwards, the and he just casually lit rolled an entire room. Just, they tried to burn the shirt using the incinerator bin, but the trash room was blocked off by an especially. She wrote it in English because it's translated. To the incinerator. So they came up with a plan to use Hero's crystal ball, which he left in the laundry room. I don't know why he did that. Like he could have used anything. The killer managed to throw the ball through the gap in the gate and hit the incinerator. Oh, it was switch. always in English. Oh, what the fuck then? For any normal person, that'd be an impossible throw. But the killer had the confidence to take a shot. Because it was ball shaped. But I mean, like, how did he know to go look there for it? I guess he just found it when he was doing laundry or something. Was the ultimate baseball star. Crystal ball. Stock Roll pot shattering precision. sounds. Hit the switch on the incinerator. Which then quickly roared to life. Having destroyed the final piece of evidence, they left the area with, I imagine, a sigh of relief. But there was one thing they missed. Part of the shirt they'd thrown into the fire burnt away. The killer didn't notice this, and so left behind a piece of indisputable evidence. Writing kanji upside down seemed... I mean, like, it's not upside down from your position. It looks right side up. It would just be harder for it to be this weird fucking evidence that we have. I guess it would be more difficult if, like, 
You expected it to be a number because you didn't expect it to be in English. Isn't that right, Leon? It would appear that Hero simply forgot What if two people had, like, the same name? Room. Or, like, a very similar name, where, like, the first letters would be very, very similar. You went there to try and wash the blood out of your shirt. And that's where you saw it, right? Seeing the ball, you thought of a way to take care of everything. Oh, okay, that's how so, he got Leon, it. Do you object to anything that's been said? Do I object? Hell yes, I object! Of course I do! I object! I object! I object! I mean, all of this is just a bunch of stupid theories! You need evidence! Where's the evidence? Without evidence, it's all bullshit! It's bullshit and I refuse to acknowledge it! But that is well, the evidence. I guess this is as good a time as any to present the evidence that proves you did it. What? Makoto, I believe you're in possession. I have evidence? Your first bullet time battle is about to begin. I would like you to explain this. Oh, for fuck's sake. Sometimes during a class trial, your opponent simply won't want to hear what you have to say. When this happens, you will engage them in a head-to-head -head battle. We would like to refer to this as a bullet time battle. A.K.A. the BTB, by the way. Fuck you for this. During the BTB, you want to destroy your opponent's statements in time with the rhythm. What? Oh, fuck, I'm gonna die. When the killer removed the screws from the doorknob, they didn't use anything from your room to do it. I refuse to acknowledge you. You're stu stupid, 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 stupid. Okay, I just start over in this segment. Okay, good. Where's your proof? You kidding me? Not a chance. It wasn't me. Stupid. It wasn't me. I get it. Where's your proof? This should prove it. Okay, it wasn't actually that bad. I'm so bad at the, the game, but I understand the now. Doorknob were removed. I wonder what kind of tool the killer used to. I mean, it had to be a screwdriver, right? Thank you, Mondo, for that assessment. You're you're doing great. Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure the tool kits we got each had one inside. And that must be what he used. There aren't any other tools anywhere. But the tool kit in my room had clearly never been used. That's because the culprit didn't know it was your room. They thought they were inside this room. Oh yeah, that's a good point. Only the boys got two kids, so the killer naturally assumed there wouldn't be one in there. Okay, then whose toolkit did the killer use? Stupid, stupid, stupid! It had to be their very own toolkit. Stupid, stupid, stupid! Leon, would you mind showing us your toolkit? The screwdriver will show some evidence of being used. Stupid, stupid, stupid! And if you say you used it for something else, you'll have to explain exactly when, where, and why. Oh, is that what stupid, stupid, stupid is? And let me say this right now. I lost it isn't an excuse at this point. Stupid. Stupid. Yeah, you're dead. <laughs> then it would seem we are finished here. Yeah, that was pretty bad. Oh, hey. <laughs> Looks like you've reached your verdict. Then are we ready to cast our votes? You hey, all the have max. a nice. in front of you. Use it to make your selection. How can a lever oh, be a deciding Just effect? to make triple sure you vote for someone. You wouldn't want to be punished for something so minor, right? Okay, then let's get excited. It's a Japanese game, though, so S could have been an option. Who will be chosen as the blackened? Will you make the right choice? What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? Can I vote for the fascist and have him die? What if we all vote, but we're wrong? Well, like, what if, like... What if the majority still votes for him, but, like, one person votes wrong? Looks like you got right on the money. Blacken in this case is the one that killed Sayaka. Yippee! Was none other than Leon Kuwata. Hey, hold on. 
Leon, did you really kill Siaka? But I don't believe it. You son of a bitch. You son of a bitch. What's well, I mean, it was in self-defense, technically speaking, at this point. I, I didn't have a choice. It was kill or be killed. So that's why. It's a kill or be killed on this bitch of an earth. Where's that fucking flower? None of you are any different. Run wrong step and you'd be standing here. It was complete chance that I wound up like I this. Just... <laughs> Unlucky. That's all. Hey, come on! You didn't just ex expect me to accept my death. Everything became clear. The decisions we made were right after all. But when I think about that, honestly, I'd feel better off if we'd been wrong. You'd rather be dead. Because if what we came up with is really the truth, then the truth is that Sayaka was trying to frame me. But even if that's true, I can't say that she was wrong. After all, the mastermind, it's all because of that video. Even I couldn't handle what I saw there. If I were her, that video actually had something to do with me, I can't even imagine. If Leon had not covered it up, then... If Leon had not covered it up, then it would have been, uh, he would have been fucked anyway. They're probably waiting for me. What? What? I can't afford to be stuck here. Manga adds additional plot points to this. Okay. And that's why Sayaka, for the friends that meant so much to her, that's why she betrayed me. And when she said, No matter what happens, please always be there for me. I called that shit. She was lying to me from the very beginning when she was using me. Is that why she talked to to me in the first place? I guess I'll never know because there's nothing I can do to ask her what she was thinking. Once you're dead, that's that. Boy howdy, the entertainment industry must be surely terrifying. I mean, to try and kill someone just because of those relationships. Ba -bum. Ba -bum. She seemed so nice and lovely on the outside, but on the inside she was descended into pure madness. What'd you say? Phew. I understand, I really do. Yep, yep. You're in utter despair thanks to Sack, his betrayal, right? Compassion, intimacy, love. Stronger those feelings, the stronger the spare when they collapse. Siaka being forced to do something like that. Oh, but everything. It's all your fault! Suddenly in a frenzy, I lunged at Monokuna. That's enough. As angry as I was, Kyoko launched into my arm without hesitation. Her grip was like iron, strong enough to make sure that it wouldn't leave him. Calm down. If you really, really want to make her enemies pay for what they've done, you need to let it go for now. Damn it! Ba -bum, ba -bum. That was a close one. I thought for sure you were gonna give me a good walloping. Just barely avoided punishment, you did. Yes, indeed. Talking like Yoda, I do now. Now then, since you so magnificently revealed the identity of the killer during the class trial, the blackened Leon Kawada will receive his punishment. Pun punishment? Yeah, that means stabbing, probably. Mostly. You mean execution? You might as well try and kill the bear. Wait a second. I didn't have a choice. I had to kill her. Yeah, that's it. It was self-defense. Okay? How exactly was it self-defense? It, it was. Oh, yeah, no, he did break into the room. Hmm. When you forced her way into the bathroom, did you or did not use your own toolkit? He had to leave. Oh, you are an asshole. Never mind. I don't fucking feel bad at all. Everyone's an asshole, it turns out. After she shut herself in the bathroom, you went out of your way to head back to your own room. And then you came all the way back and broke into the bathroom and killed her, am I wrong? Do you understand? I had any number of chances to stop what you were doing. But you chose not to. Is it not because you had unclouded intent to commit murder? So, that's why... No, it's not. Why didn't you bring a weapon, dumbass? Stop it! I've had enough of this. Oh. Are you sure? You were closer to her than anyone, were you not? He killed your precious Sayaka, do you understand? I can't say that Leon is solely to blame. Of course, I didn't plan on blaming Siaka either. Because... Because the one to blame is him. Huh? If it weren't for you, this would never would have happened to Siaka or Leon. We shouldn't be fighting each other. We should be fighting against the one who put us in this situation. The Mastermind. Unbelievable. Did you just awaken your sense of justice? Hey, um... Well, just so happens there's nothing more unethical than unwavering sense of justice. Oh, it's fucking truth bombs from the truth guns for the truth panels. After all, it's people with that sort of mentality that portray war all over the world. Hmm. It's that kind of justice that's awakened within you. Shut up! Hmm. Okay, well anyway, but more importantly, cows, let's hurry cows, up and get away So what everyone's been waiting for, the punishment. I'm begging you, please, don't do this! 
No more begging, no more excuses. You must pay the penalty for breaking the rules. Society demands it. Stop, please! Now then, I've prepared a very special punishment. Is this gonna be super extra? Do we all just gather around with baseball bats? That was his true face of despair. I mean, if we can call it that, what else could we call it? Extreme! <laughs> Man, my adrenaline is pumping right out of control. Wow, you guys got three. That means three streams, three fucking deaths. This one had a high average, but you know. I, I can't take it. Anyone else want to die? Bring this up to like a three point or a 1.333. Do we really have to keep doing this? I just can't take it. Well? If you don't like it, then die. <laughs> All you gotta do is swear to cut ties with the outside world and to accept living here forever. But that's only if every single one of you can get on board with that. <laughs> D damn you. Man, fuck you. What the fuck are you doing all this evil shit to us? What the heck? Evil? You make it sound like I'm some kind of dark, awful, secret society type of guy. You are. Say what? Or in this case, a dark, awful, secret society type of bear. Um, why are you putting an upstanding young citizen like me through such a grueling ordeal? Hey, I have um... waifus to attend to. His video is just all of his waifus, and they've been knocked over. Like, he's got, like, a desk full of them. And, like, his sheets have been torn a little bit. And he's like, no! It's like trying to put a mile on a scale. I don't think it's possible. I don't think what you're saying and what I'm saying quite fit together. Piece of shit. I don't know who you are, but I'm gonna pound your ass into the ground. <laughs> you must really hate me to get so angry, huh? But if you do that, you're baking, barking up the wrong tree. Yeah. What happened happened because one of you decided you wanted to get out, right? No matter how much time passes, you can't cut free of your regrets from the outside world. You're to blame. <laughs> of course we can cut free from the outside world. Being trapped in this place... <laughs> but you're trapped, aren't you? I'm sure... Once you all learn the mysteries of this school, your thinking will change for sure. You'll think, boy, isn't it wonderful how we all get to live here forever? And just like that, he was gone. He left us there, overwhelmed by a nightmare turned reality. Even after he was gone, we stood there forever, unable to move. Actually, no, it wasn't that long, I think. Everyone just lost their sense of time. We were all too scared. Scared of being alone. No one even tried to speak. Their faces were stone. Their voices were dead. It was in that moment. Just a second. Makoto, can I talk to you for a second? She just moved in close and whispered into my ear. Makoto. I got a half chub. Before we head back, there's something I want to talk to you about. It's about Sakia, isn't it? 
Surprised you'll figure it out. I told you before the class trial started. You had to figure out this mystery of a case yourself. You wanted me to realize how Sakia betrayed me by myself, didn't you? And the thought never even crossed my mind. I feel like such a fool. It kind of, it kind of fucking did. It's true. Sakia meant to double cross you. The fact can never change. Never change. But even until the very end, she wasn't sure of her decision. That's why, as she lay dying, she was thinking of you. She was thinking of me? You can't say just, yeah, she wrote Leon's name. I mean, there's no way you can know that. Only Sakia would know for sure. We can't ask her now. However, even if you can't ask her, you can infer it, don't you think? Her final thought was to how she could protect you. Poor Sakia died like she lived, with Rev having no idea how to say her name. <laughs> so. The fact that she used her last ounce of energy to leave her dying message proves it. If she didn't care about what happened to you, she never would have left that message. Maybe she did want to just protect you back at, uh, to get back to the person who killed her. Certainly. I mean, yeah, fuck her, to be honest. Sorry I tried to frame you, baby. Yeah. That's certainly one possibility, but I don't think that's what it was. Anyway. She was uncertain. She wasn't sure that she could kill someone or deceive you. Which is why her plan failed. Her hesitation attracted failure. Right. It's almost ironic when you think about it. Why are you telling me about all this? Because you're kind of a person who can overcome this. Because you can move past the deaths of your friends, Sayaka and Leon, and keep moving forward. Correct. Without someone like that, the others would never be able to break free of such of a desperate situation. Move past their deaths? That's... I can never do that. No, how could I possibly move past something like that? Leon. cut George, I'll carry them with me forever. I'll carry their memories with me wherever I go. Instead of instead of forgetting about them, you're choosing the hard road. <laughs> we'll have high expectations for you. As she said that, she revealed the smallest smile. Hey. By the way, I have to admit I'm curious. How did you know that I wanted to talk to you about George? Oh well. I'm psychic. What? What? Kidding. I just have pretty good intuition. I think this is a good spot to... Jesus, fuck. I think that's where we're going to put the to be continued for ours as well. The despair bat present. I don't think I need that anymore.